Testing one, two. Testing one, two. This is Melvin. Testing one, two. Check one, two. Check three, four. Check five, six. Check seven, eight. Check nine, ten. Check ten, eleven. Check twelve, thirteen. <laughs> Check fourteen. Check fifteen. Welcome to Bragg Memorial Stadium on the beautiful campus of Florida A&M University. What is that? This is the Jeff Walker Network. You heard his name. <laughs> All right. So uh, what I'm going to try to do, this is not something I've ever done. Let me kill us first. Just tipping it down sights, and we're ready for the cozy era in FAMU football. And for those of you who haven't been to a FAMU football game yet, here's something you can expect at every home game. When the dark clouds get on the horizon, when thunder and lightning fill the sky, when fate and butter glitter in the eye will fall the rattler and hope for lost friends, when the sound of the chest grows weary from those hard charging linebackers, and the muscles in the legs grow tired from those hard charging running backs. You must always remember that the Rattlers will strike and strike and strike again. Let's go, fam, you!
Good evening and welcome to the Rattler Sports Network. I'm Melvin Beal. We're here at Bragg Memorial Stadium where the Florida a &M Rattlers are handling their spring game. This the orange against the white team on today. Rattlers coming off a national championship in Atlanta. And it's ironic that this game is going to start with the kick as they line up for a field goal right now to start play. The field goal is up. The field goal is good. Folks, this is a little bit of a different format coming into the spring game, not like a regular game. They started with a kick. That's going to establish field position for both teams, and they're going to warm up again as they're down on the field. I'm Melvin Beal. Thank you, and welcome to the Rattler Sports Network. For today's game, there's going to be honorary coaches. Rudy Hubbard, the head coach of the national championship team in 1978, and his assistant, Alan Bogan. They're the honorary coaches for today's game, and we got an opportunity to talk with head coach James Cozy earlier today. Uh, he was there as well as head coach Rudy Hubbard. Rudy Hubbard addressed the crowd enlighten them on the history of FAMU football. And I got a chance to talk with Coach Cozy, and he was talking about his new stint here at Florida a and a stint that will see him take over for Willie Simmons, who resigned to go to the Duke University. And here is Coach Cozy talking this morning. Up winning 30 to 26. I think of Isaiah Major, uh, you know, you know, picking off that screen play. Uh, you know, something that we actually we should talk about weekly. You know, going through the two-minute drill, and then you start seeing the confetti and you know flying down, and the confetti is orange and green and all the other stuff. So obviously, it's a real moment. You know, uh, you know, anytime you get an opportunity to be at the top of the mountain, I mean, that's, that's always a blessing. And obviously, we were we were very very excited. Definitely, that transitions into you being named the Florida a and head football coach. Once named, tell us about your feelings on being named. Well, you know, obviously excited, and, you know, I, got, you know, I told people earlier, you know, when, when, you know, when Vice President Sykes named me the interim, you know, we, we, we you know, she told me flat out, she said, hey, man, you know, act like, act like it's yours, you know, make sure you're doing everything as the head coach. So we, you know, got named in January, but... You know, and from January up, from the beginning of January up to that time, you know, we were we were doing all the things necessary to, to make sure the guys had the understanding that, look, that if this does happen or when it does happen, you know, we still have to make sure that we're ready for our, our drills. We have to still make sure we're ready for spring practice. So, you know, January 8th, we actually started working out. You know, we were, we were 100% in the weight room as far as doing the things necessary to get ready for this upcoming season. So, you know, even though it was I was named at that time, you know, I was still doing everything as if, I would hopefully be the head coach. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about the continuity. You were in the system, so you knew the players, you knew the coaches. Talk a little bit about that transition as head coach. Well, I think it was, you know, at that time it was important to make sure that our guys felt that. You know, they, you know, they didn't really want to have a wholesale change, and I think they expressed those type of things. But while, while going through the process, you know, you have to still go through the process. So we were, you know, Coach Henry. Was you know was was acting as the offensive coordinator. You know, we uh, Coach Patterson was acting as the defensive coordinator. We didn't want our guys to see any any drop off and all the things that we were doing because, as I said earlier, we were we you know you don't get ready for the season, you know July 23rd or July 24th. No, you get you get ready for the season 
once the spring started, which would have been that first week in January. So we didn't want our guys to see anything, any, any hitches in the giddy up. We didn't want to see anything that, you know, would have sent or sent the message that we weren't getting ready. So, you know, we, we acted as such. We made sure we did the things, like I said, we did the things that those guys understood that we were going to be getting ready for the 2024 season as if that staff was going to be here. Definitely. Back live here at Bragg Memorial Stadium. Rattlers warming up. They're actually doing position drills right now. So, folks, this is a little bit different as far as spring football is concerned. In the past, it's been orange against the green. Right now is positions warming up. Quarterbacks are with the quarterbacks, defense and offense. They are both warming up, and this is not in official game capacity right now. We'll be back in a moment. Family football season is ready to strike. Cheer the Rattlers to victory and be entertained by the Marching 100 this football season at Bragg Memorial Stadium. When the game is over, you can explore even more excitement in Tallahassee. Explore over 700 miles of trails, sway to the rhythmic tunes at the Bradfordville Blues Club, sip on a beer from our many craft breweries, or dine at one of our incredible local restaurants. Plan your trip to the highest of seven hills at visittallahassee.com. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Escape to a peaceful retreat at Hyatt House, Tallahassee, Capital University. Located just steps away from FSU and FAMU in the heart of Railroad Square Arts Park, Tallahassee's newest extended stay hotel offers all the comforts of home with residential inspired suites, including plush beds, separate sitting areas, and fully equipped kitchens. Wake up to a complimentary morning spread served daily and unwind at the H Bar, offering cocktails and apps nightly. Hyatt House, a flexible, elevated approach to extended stay. I'm Dr. Hughes, cardiovascular surgeon. The Florida Lottery has contributed billions of dollars to education, putting kids like me on the path to success. And they've awarded countless Bright Future scholarships, helping me pursue higher education. So I can do more than just dream of a brighter future. I can create one. The Florida Lottery is proud to help fund the futures of students all across our state. Learn more at flalottery.com slash education. Yo estoy bien. I'm okay on money. Sí, y papá? Yeah, I'm starting work tomorrow, actually. Hi, can you tell me if I'm doing this right? Yeah, that looks right. Oh, really? I think you're good. When you leave one comfort zone in search of another, Regions has I'll the people, tools, and tech. I can help you with that. New job? New everything. To help you move forward faster and brave the beginning. <laughs> Family football season is ready to strike. Cheer the Rattlers to victory and be entertained by the Marching 100 this football season at Bragg Memorial Stadium. When the game is over, you can explore even more excitement in Tallahassee. Explore over 700 miles of trails, sway to the rhythmic tunes at the Bradfordville Blues Club, sip on a beer from our many craft breweries, or dine at one of our incredible local restaurants. Plan your trip to the highest of seven hills at visittallahassee.com. Get ready, Rattler Nation. Introducing Rattlers Plus, the ultimate digital network for all things Florida A&M sports. Catch the excitement live with exclusive coverage of Rattlers games, relive classic moments, and dive into original content that brings you closer to the action than ever before. But that's not all. Tune in to Rattlers Plus to listen to heart-pounding commentary and analysis of Rattler sports. Don't miss a beat. Subscribe to Rattlers Plus now by visiting famuathletics.com slash watch. Welcome back to the Rattler Sports Network. I'm Melvin Beal. Mike Goart 
Albert Chester is in the stadium but has been repurposed as the public address announcer today. So I'm flying solo, folks, and uh, we'll try and bring in some interviews and what have you throughout this game. But the game hasn't officially started right now. Uh, the teams are warming up in their respective positions. But this is the big deal for Florida A&M. After winning a national championship, as we know, Willie Simmons resigned January the 1st to go to Duke University. And after a little bit of a delay, James Cozy III was named a head football coach here at Florida a and He took over this program after being the interim during that transition period. And the Rattlers got 15 days to go through spring practices, and it culminates today with the orange and green game here at Bragg Stadium. Uh, the admission today was $15 for the game, and a, a noticeable, a respectable crowd on hand. The marching 100 is here, and Florida a and is, well, this, it was set to kick off at, 50, at, at 4 o'clock, but as we stated earlier, the Rattlers are warming up out on the field, and uh, we'll – Follow the game as it starts. The spring game serves as an opportunity for the Rattler Nation and college football fans to get a preview of the defending black college national champions, Florida a and The Rattlers boast a new look roster, which includes first-year head coach James Cozy and an influx of transfers. There are six players that we're going to be watching today for Florida a and It starts with the quarterback battle, and that is Junior Maradovic, and he's going to be going up against Daniel Richardson. Now, Richardson is an interesting prospect. Everyone wants to know who that QB1 will be. Will it be Maradovic or Richardson? Saturday will provide a glimpse. It, Today will provide a glimpse of the ongoing quarterback battle that has seen Maradovic and Richardson. They both shared first-team reps. Maradovic has been at Florida A&M since 2021. He's entering his fourth year in the system. He has two career starts, one as a true freshman and one as a redshirt sophomore from last season. Now, Richardson transferred to FAMU after stints at Central Michigan and most recently, Florida Atlantic, though, though in his first season with the Rattlers, he's in his final year of eligibility. Now, Richardson's has over 32 career starts on FBS subdivision level, and, is the, and he quarterbacked Central Michigan to a 2021 Sun Bowl victory. Early today, the university put on a new event in honor of Coach Cozy calling Coffee with Cozy. Cozy, I got an opportunity to interview him, and he talked about different things that were going on with this program. Here's Coach Cozy this morning. And let's talk about the continuity of staff. Your name, Joe Henry, as the offensive coordinator, assistant head coach and then you named a new defensive coordinator. Talk to us a little bit about those transitions for the coaches. Well, when you, when you think about the players, we, we didn't want to change our systems, right? So, you know, Coach Henry was our co-offensive coordinator. Obviously, Coach Simmons was our head coach and the offensive coordinator. But, but you know, Coach Henry was one of the architects that helped this offense go the way it went. So if we're talking about the continuity aspect, we wanted to make sure offensively we were still doing the same things, mm -hmm. uh, making sure we're using the same terminology. Uh, so now if we were bringing any other coaches in or any other players in, they had to learn the new terminology as Absolutely. opposed to coaches saying, hey, this is how we do it. So that was important for us on the offensive side. Coach Patterson, who was our you know, co-defensive coordinator and our defensive line coach, been in the system for over three years. Similar, you know, similar thoughts. Still going to run our 40 defense coach with, the, with running quarters behind it. So we wanted to keep that the same. You know, obviously the, the dark cloud and you know, all the nicknames that they give the defense, we wanted to continue to do those things that have made the defense as, as what it was. So you know, even though we did lose our defensive coordinator to another institution, again, we still wanted to make sure that we were still doing the same things on both sides of the football and also including our special teams. And this past week, you ended up hiring a defensive back coach. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, Andre Pope was a guy that, you know, you know, you go back with similar to, to me and some guys that, you know, guys that I can trust. And, and Andre Pope played for me at West Georgia in, in 2010, and he was a really, really good player for us. Don't let him tell you how good he thought he was. He was, you know, he was, he was he'll tell you he was great, but he, got, he was above average, right? Um, but, you know, he was a guy that had gone through, he, you know, he's, 
he played, then he then he went the GA route, and he was a guy that we you know we stayed in constant communication. And then obviously you know Coach Morgan, who did a really really good job for us, and a guy that I still trust and talk to on a daily basis, who got an opportunity to be a head coach. Well, when he when Coach Morgan left, I already knew that you know Coach Pope would be the guy that I could say, hey, I want you to take care of the back end, and I trust you know that you're going to do exactly how Coach Morgan did for me, like did you know did together over the last two years. So through the spring. That's your old position, correct? Yes. Defensive back. He's up under a real challenge because he replaces you. Well, we know we, we use a lot of the same verbiage. You know, he, he coached the safeties. You know, I'm not I'm not necessarily ready yet to give up the corners, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. But uh, you know, we you know we do a lot of the same things. You know, he came from Alabama State, who was also extremely successful on the defensive side. They run similar schemes, but ultimately, with how close Coach Morgan and I were over the last two years, I thought it was important to make sure that that relationship stayed the same once Coach Morgan left. And, and that made, you know, Coach Pope was the ideal candidate, and to be honest with you, you know, he was the candidate that I wanted for that position. Definitely. So Back live here at Bragg Memorial Stadium, we're about to get set for the spring game. It's the orange versus the green team. And actually, it's going to be the players in white that will represent the green this year for Florida A&M. They'll start this play at the 20-yard line for Florida A&M, the white team. The quarterbacks have on their respective jerseys tonight, so that means you can't really hit them. And that was a, a big, big point of contention for Coach Cozy coming into this year is that they did not want to have a whole lot of injuries coming out of the spring game. The ball has been advanced to the 35-yard line for Florida A&M's white team. We'll call them the green team today because they're going up against the orange team. Florida A&M coming in after winning the Black College National Championship in Atlanta. Once again, I'm Melvin Beal here with the Rattler Sports Network. My cohort, Albert Chester, has been repurposed as the public service announcement guy today and back to pass for Florida A&M that's going to be incomplete on the play as that was Austin Rivers for Florida A&M now the setup here is a little bit different there's been a penalty flag dropped down on the field and it's basically going to be an offensive versus defensive battle today so the rules are a little bit different and folks just bear with me because I'll have to learn as we go along this is not a regular flow of a football game this is designed for the Rattlers to build momentum as they get set to defend their national championship this year Rattlers open up in Atlanta against Norfolk State. That'll be on August the 24th, and they'll be playing at Georgia State Stadium in Atlanta. The motive today and the goal for the Rattlers is to start in Atlanta and end in Atlanta. The Celebration Bowl is played December the 16th in Atlanta. If the Rattlers can make it there, they can defend their championship, and become back-to-back -back national champions. Ball is going to be marked down at the 40-yard line of the orange as the Rattlers looking to get some offensive possessions going here for the green team. Quarterback back to pass, and it's going to be complete for about a nine-yard game again. It's not about first and tens as they're moving the markers after each play, whether it's complete or whether it's uh, no yardage gained on the play. A little bit different set of rules for us here. And here we go. The green team, they're going to mark the ball down at the 26-yard line of the orange. We're just underway, 12 minutes, 30 seconds remaining here in the first quarter of the Florida A&M spring game here at Bragg Memorial Stadium. Quarterback back looking, and it's going to be pressured, and he's going to be stopped. He's going to be stopped right there. Again, you cannot make contact with the quarterbacks in the spring game, and the green team is going to turn this ball over on downs at about the 30 two-yard line of the orange. The interesting thing would be, do they employ the kickers at this particular point? We'll be back in a moment. 
HBCU students, are you making a difference? AT&T wants to support you in taking your dreams to new heights with a chance to win five grand and so much more. Apply now to the AT&T Rising Future Makers Showcase by uploading a video or a written submission to att.com slash RFM Showcase. Don't miss your chance to become a part of the Rising Future Makers Network for support and life-changing connections. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents, age of majority. Ends 11 6 Void if prohibited. Subject to official rules. At Tallahassee Orthopedic Clinic, we help our patients pursue better lives one story at a time. Whether you want to compete at the top of your game, play with your grandkids, or simply enjoy a day without pain, TOC is where you go to get better. With a patient-centered approach and unparalleled orthopedic and sports medicine care, we are here to help you live a healthy and active lifestyle. Visit TLHOC.com to learn more. Tallahassee Orthopedic Clinic, the team behind the team. No, mommy, yo estoy bien. I'm okay, I'm money. Si, y papa? Yeah, I'm starting work tomorrow, actually. Hi, can you tell me if I'm doing this right? Yeah, that looks right. Oh, really? I think you're good. When you leave one comfort zone in search of another, Regents has the people, tools, and tech. I can help you with that. New job? New everything. To help you move forward faster and brave the beginning. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here on the beautiful campus of Florida A&M University. We're here for the Florida A&M spring game. The green team is quarterbacked by Junior Murata. The give is up the middle to the running back. He's going to be stacked up on that play by the orange, and it's going to bring up a third down for the green team. Again, folks, this is a little bit different format here at Ken Raleigh Field as the orange and green team are going against each other. After 15 days of practice this spring, Rattlers defending national champions, and they are looking to replace a plethora of players. They brought in some transfers. There are some guys that have entered the transfer portal. So this is a new look Rattler team as we're looking at right now a third down for the Rattlers. Junior Moranovic is one of the guys that's vying for the quarterback position. He's back to pass. He's looking. He's looking. Fires, and he completes the ball at around the 20-yard line, and that'll be a first down for, for the green team. Nine minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the first quarter. No score here at Bragg Memorial Stadium on Ken Raleigh Field as the orange and green are going against each other here in the Florida A&M spring game. Crowd in on hand along with the marching 100 as the Green team will line up at the 21-yard line. Junior Maradovic gets your quarterback. Back to pass. Fires. And he completes the ball out to his wide receiver around the 25-yard line. And that's going to bring up second down. Five yards to go for the green team. Nine minutes, 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Maradovic back. He's being pressured, being pressured, being pressured. Fires, completes this ball out to his running back. It's going to be brought down at the 30-yard line. That's going to be a close to a green team first down. And right now, it's a little bit short. We're going to call it third down, two yards to go. For the green team, right now, they do not have yardage information available here in the stadium. Everything is being kept down on the field, consistent with it being a green game. It looks like it's going to be third down, two yards to go for the green team. The give is up the middle to Yan. Yan breaks out across to the, about the 40-yard line. That's going to be a first down for the Rattler green team. Eight minutes, 14 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. We're at Bragg Memorial Stadium at Ken Raleigh Field. And there's been a halt in action. We'll take one with them. We'll be back in a moment. 
FAMU football season is ready to strike. Cheer the Rattlers to victory and be entertained by the Marching 100 this football season at Bragg Memorial Stadium. When the game is over, you can explore even more excitement in Tallahassee. Explore over 700 miles of trails, sway to the rhythmic tunes at the Bradfordville Blues Club, sip on a beer from our many craft breweries, or dine at one of our incredible local restaurants. Plan your trip to the highest of seven hills at visittallahassee.com. Relax in Tallahassee at the Hampton Inn and Suites Capital University. Located between FAMU and SFU, surrounded by many restaurants, shopping, and nightlife. Enjoy free Wi-Fi, free hot breakfast, and our clean, fresh Hampton beds. Enjoy great value and experience Hamptonality. Visit Hampton.com to book your next day. Get great seats, safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a Ticket Smarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Get ready, Rattler Nation. Introducing Rattlers Plus, the ultimate digital network for all things Florida A&M sports. Catch the excitement live with exclusive coverage of Rattlers games, relive classic moments, and dive into original content that brings you closer to the action than ever before. But that's not all. Tune in to Rattlers Plus to listen to heart-pounding commentary and analysis of Rattler sports. Don't miss a beat. Subscribe to Rattlers Plus now by visiting famuathletics.com slash watch. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here on the beautiful campus of Florida A&M University where we are here for the Florida A&M football spring game. It's the orange versus the green. And, folks, it's a little bit different format here as there is no down and yardage that's being used right now as they're going to set the ball down at the four-yard line of the green team. Now, they just completed a pass up at around the 40-yard line, so this is a different format for us. At quarterback now for Florida a and it looks like it's going to be Richardson, the transfer out of Florida Atlantic. He rolls to his right. He's looking. He's looking. He's looking. Now he takes off running, and he's going to get about nine yards on the play. Again, the quarterbacks wearing the red jersey so they cannot have contact. And that is a nice run by this young man who competed at Central Michigan. These guys won the Sun Bowl in 2021. He transferred to Florida Atlantic and transferred into Florida A&M as a graduate student this year. And he is battling Junior Maradovic for the starting lineup, starting quarterback for Florida A&M. Looks like it's going to be about second down as seven yards to go. Seven minutes, 20 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Richardson back to pass, looking, looking, fires, and he completes the ball. Actually, it's incomplete. Looking to connect with Jeremiah Pruitt on the play for the green team. And it's going to bring up second down, eight yards to go for the green team. Florida a and Again, had 15 practice sessions. Rattlers practicing at 6 a.m. in the morning. Have experienced some guys going into the transfer portal. Done the defensive lineman, the latest to declare for the transfer portal. On this past week, Richardson back to pass. Looking, 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 looking. Fires at the last minute. It's going to be incomplete on the play. And that's going to be a turnover on downs. And the Orange team will get an opportunity as they line this ball up at around the 10-yard line, make it the 9-yard line of the Orange. So effectively, folks, what's happening right here, they are going to punt the football. For the first time today, it looks like they're going to set up for a point punt. Obviously, there's only about – Eight players on the field, no blockers for the return man. This is a spring game, a different type of format. Kick, 
is on the way. It's going to be recovered there by the punt returner. On the play, that looks like it's going to be Jamari Gassett, and he's going to be run out of bounds at around the 52-yard line. So, folks, stay with us as we learn the rules of this spring game. Again, talking with Coach Cozy, the deal here is to make sure that these guys are mentally prepared to compete on the football field. You want to come out of these games with no injuries. Florida a and has been beset with injuries in the spring game over the last two years. And so right now, there's a break in the action, and we'll be back in a moment. Escape to a peaceful retreat at Hyatt House, Tallahassee, Capital University. Located just steps away from FSU and FAMU in the heart of Railroad Square Arts Park, Tallahassee's newest extended stay hotel offers all the comforts of home with residential inspired suites, including plush beds, separate sitting areas, and fully equipped kitchens. Wake up to a complimentary morning spread served daily and unwind at the H Bar offering cocktails and apps nightly. Hyatt House, a flexible, elevated approach to extended stay. There is a reason sports fans prepare the original Louisiana brand hot sauce. That's because the original Louisiana brand hot sauce adds a kick of flavor to so many things. Pop to popcorn, pizzazz to pizza, zing to wings. Made using only sun-ripened peppers pickled at the peak of perfection. The original Louisiana brand hot sauce is America's choice for game day. The original Louisiana brand hot sauce brings the heat. HBCU students, are you making a difference? AT&T wants to support you in taking your dreams to new heights with a chance to win five grand and so much more. Apply now to the AT&T Rising Future Makers Showcase by uploading a video or a written submission to att.com slash RFM Showcase. Don't miss your chance to become a part of the Rising Future Makers Network for support and life-changing connections. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents, age of majority. Ends 11623. Void if prohibited. Subject to official rules. Since 1985, Apogee Signs has been North Florida's preferred sign company. We believe in quality, professionalism, and complete service. Apogee Signs, a proud supporter of FAMU Athletics. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium at Ken Raleigh Field. I'm Melvin Beal here with the Rattler Sports Network. We are covering the Florida a and spring game, the orange against the green. We have five minutes remaining in the first quarter. Rattlers on the green side, led by Richardson, the transfer, Daniel Richardson, the transfer from Florida Atlantic. And he gives this ball off to the running back who gets about – Ten yards on the play, and he's going to be corralled and pushed out of bounds for Florida A&M. That was Jamari Gassett, the wide receiver. They'll set this ball down at about the 44-yard line. We have four minutes and 29 seconds remaining here in the first quarter of this Florida A&M spring game. Richardson battling Junior Maradovic at quarterback. These two have been going back and forth during the spring, both taking first-team snaps. Here's Richardson, back to pass, looking, fires out, complete to his receiver, and that's going to be complete to his running back, Jaquez Yant. Yant, the transfer, out of the University of Nebraska, local kid, out of, of, of Godby High School, and he's going to get a first down for this green team. Three minutes, 52 seconds remaining here in the first quarter as they set the ball down at the 46-yard line of the green. Florida A&M looking to make it happen on the green side. No score here at Bright Stadium. Here's Richardson back to pass. Fires, and this pass is going to be intercepted. Intercepted by the Orange team. And a big play for the Rattlers trying to identify the player right now for Florida a and Rattlers looking to replace a plethora of players on defense as the green drive stalls at the 46-yard line on an interception 
by the new quarterback, Daniel Richardson. And we'll have a break into action here on the Rattler Sports Network. Trust, loyalty, and commitment are the Tallahassee Police Department's core values. They led me to join the force 22 years ago. My name is Lieutenant Danielle Davis. TPD is looking to hire individuals with a willingness to serve. We offer up to $11,000 in hiring bonuses, competitive salary, and benefits. Apply today online at talgov.com forward slash join TPD. Back live here at Bragg Stadium, Green Team takes over for Florida a and Junior Maradovic is going to be the quarterback for Florida a and as he gives the ball to the running back, and he's going to gain about six yards on the play for Florida a and It's going to bring up second down, five yards to go. And basically, folks, now we've figured it out. It's offense against defense, so it's not orange against green. The offense is in white. Defense is in orange. And they're going to go back and forth. So no change inside tactics here. What they're changing is quarterbacks as they go through these progressions here at Bragg Stadium. This is a bit different. If you remember, under Willie Simmons, the Rattlers would actually draft two teams and they would compete with those two teams. Maradov is going to be initially sacked. Again, you can't touch the quarterbacks in this control scrimmage. And it's going to bring up third and about six yards to go for the offense. This game is officiated. By members of the SWAC officiating team. Again, the clock has one minute and 59 seconds remaining in the first quarter. I'm Melvin Beal. My cohort, Albert Chester, is the PA announcer for today's game. Maradovic back. Pass complete to his wide receiver who breaks free. And it looks like he's got a first down on the play. For Florida A&M, and that's going to be to Jeremiah Pruitt, an impressive tight end for Florida A&M. Now, Pruitt, his measurables pose him as an, a, a really an aerial threat. He's going to be a big, big part of this Florida A&M offense because he shared playing time with Kamari Young last year. He graduated. Kamari Young was effective for the Rattlers, but Pruitt is a 6'5", 230-pounder, and he may get even more touches this season. The graduate student Pruitt has caught 13 passes for 202 yards for Florida A&M, and he had a touchdown last year. Pruitt has the distinction of playing wide receiver at the FBS level, as he did at Colorado State before transferring to Florida A&M in 2021. He could pose mismatches against defenses because he has the speed of a wide receiver playing the tight end position. Maradovic moving the offense. The give is up the middle to the Rattler running back. And that running back on the play is Kelvin Dean. Dean named offensive most valuable player in the Celebration Bowl. Local product out of Tallahassee Rickers and an effective part of this Rattler rushing attack. Ball is being placed down at the 35-yard line. Here is Maradovic looking back to pass, passing, looking, looking, fires. Man open. Man catches the ball, falls down around the 20-yard line. Big catch in there for Florida A&M. Ja'Cory Jordan with the catch, a 6-4 receiver out of Jacksonville, Florida, Trinity Christian High School. Offense in business right now for Florida A&M as they mark this ball down around the 21-yard line. We have 26 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. We're at Bragg Memorial Stadium at Ken Riley 
feel as the offense going up against the defense in this Florida A&M spring game. Offense looking to score the football. Murado get fires, looks, misses a guy wide open in the end zone. That pass was a little bit off target. We have five seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Rattlers looking to get their timing down in this format, folks. It's the offense versus the defense. Offense is wearing white jerseys, white helmets, white pants. Defense in orange jerseys, orange pants. Right now, we can't see the down marker. That's not on the field for us today. But they marked the ball at the 21-yard line. Maradovic, back to pass, looking, 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 fires, has a man for a touchdown, touchdown for the offense, touchdown fam, you, touchdown Rattlers, as Maradovic completes the ball to Kobe Gross, a tight end, 6'2", 243 pounder, a graduate student out of San Marron, California, he attended Pittsburgh High School, a transfer of Florida State. And, folks, we have a score as the offense is up 6 to nothing here at the Florida a &M Spring Game. Set for the point after for Florida a and Kick is up. Kick is good. As the offense goes up seven to nothing here at Bragg Memorial Stadium, that's the end of the first quarter. Offense seven to nothing. An impressive drive by Maradovic, kept by an impressive 18 yard pass to Kobe Gross. Offense up seven is in nothing here at Bragg Stadium. We'll be back in a moment. FAMU football season is ready to strike. Cheer the Rattlers to victory and be entertained by the Marching 100 this football season at Bragg Memorial Stadium. When the game is over, you can explore even more excitement in Tallahassee. Explore over 700 miles of trails, sway to the rhythmic tunes at the Bradford Field Blues Club, sip on a beer from our many craft breweries, or dine at one of our incredible local restaurants. Plan your trip to the highest of seven hills at visittallahassee.com. I'm Dr. Hughes, cardiovascular surgeon. The Florida Lottery has contributed billions of dollars to education, putting kids like me on the path to success. And they've awarded countless Bright Future scholarships, helping me pursue higher education. So I can do more than just dream of a brighter future. I can create one. The Florida Lottery is proud to help fund the futures of students all across our state. Learn more at flalottery.com education. Get ready, Rattler Nation. Introducing Rattlers Plus, the ultimate digital network for all things Florida A&M sports. Catch the excitement live with exclusive coverage of Rattlers games, relive classic moments, and dive into original content that brings you closer to the action than ever before. But that's not all. Tune in to Rattlers Plus to listen to heart-pounding commentary and analysis of Rattler sports. Don't miss a beat. Subscribe to Rattlers Plus now by visiting famuathletics.com slash watch. Welcome back to Tallahassee, Florida. We're here at Bragg Memorial Stadium at Ken Raleigh Field where the Florida a and spring game is taking place. I'm Melvin Beal. I cohort Albert Chester is the public address announcer today. And what we have is a 7 to nothing score. The format, folks, is offense against defense. Quarterback Junior Maradovic led the offense on a 70-yard drive capped by a touchdown to tight end Kobe Goss. We have a 7 to nothing score, and we're just underway here in the second quarter. At quarterback for Florida A&M is the transfer from Florida Atlantic, Daniel Richardson. He'll get the offensive possession 
on this series. Richardson back, looking, and he's going to give it to the running back on the play. And the running back fights for yardage, trying to identify who that was for Florida and m It looks like it's for Sean Quinn, a running back, 5'8", 210 pound, redshirt sophomore out of Miami, Florida. And he attended Christopher Columbus High School. Here's to give again to Quinn. He's going to be stacked up in there by the Florida A&M dark cloud defense. And he'll gain minimum yardage on the play. So it's offense against defense here in the spring game. Rattlers playing in this spring football game, the culmination of 15 days to practice here in the spring. Rattlers looking to defend their Black College National Championship. Rattlers have had an influx of transfers. At quarterback is one of those guys fighting for the quarterback position, Dan Richardson. Richardson gives this ball off to the running back. And he's going to be stopped for a minimum gain on the play. It looks like Quinn is the ball carrier for Florida a as Rattler fans taking in the action here at Bragg Memorial Stadium. We're challenged to know what down it is right now because they don't have the yard markers up right now as far as the down marker. But the way it's setting up, Rattler offense will need eight yards Richardson is your quarterback 12 minutes 53 seconds remaining second quarter of the spring game here's Richardson back looking looking fires and it's going to be incomplete That's going to bring up third down, eight yards to go for the offense. Now, they're moving this ball back, which indicates there may have been a penalty on the offense, but they're moving the yard marker all the way back, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. Entering the game, a new quarterback, Trey Fisher, the son of Jimbo Fisher, has entered the game. Young man played at Godby High School. He'll get his turn at quarterback for the offense. They set the ball down at the 25-yard line. 12 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Fisher looking to get into this quarterback battle. Fires, completes the ball out. To his wide receiver, that's going to be complete to Ja'Cory Jordan. And it's going to bring up second and about three yards to go for the offense. Trey Fisher, the local product. Again, getting reps here in this spring game. The focus has been on the quarterback battle for the number one position, Junior Maradovic. And Dan Richardson, here is Fisher, rolling out, rolling out. He's going to keep this ball on the run, and he's still got yardage, and they're going to blow the play dead as you cannot make contact with the quarterbacks in this game. And it looks like he picked up about six yards on the play for the offense. It is extremely difficult to see that yard marker that indicates the down. Offense needs two yards to go. Trey Fisher is your quarterback. 11 minutes remaining. The give is up the middle to the running back on the play. That was a nice run by Andrew Tischer. We have two number 33s, actually. Make that tell a Kendricks, a junior out of Gainesville, Florida, on the play 
for the offense. That's going to bring up first down 10 yards to go for the offense as they mark the ball at the 39-yard line of the offense. The give is to the running back up the middle. And he's going to get about six yards on the play. Again, that's the running back. And that'll be Taylor Kendricks. Good-looking run for him as it looks like it's going to bring up a second down, one yard to go for the offense. Trey Fisher is your quarterback in this rotation of quarterbacks on offense. He's a 5'11", 180-pound redshirt senior out of Tallahassee Godby High School. Second down, one yard to go for the offense. And the Fisher back completes the ball out to his wide receiver on that play. Looks like it's going to be Andrew Ritter on the catch for the offense. That's going to give the offense a first down as they set the ball down at about the 50, make that the 48-yard line. Offense driving under Trey Fisher. Fisher again, the son of Jimbo Fisher, former Florida State coach, lately Texas A&M dismissed. The big news is, is that he got the $75 million contract. Fisher is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage and lose about six yards on the play as the Rattler defense comes up with a big stop against the offense. Eight minutes, 26 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Offense up seven to nothing. As this format pits offense against defense, we have seen play from Junior Muradovic along with Dan Richardson. Trey Fisher is the quarterback. He fires that ball. It's almost it's caught. It's caught in there by number 87, Juan Hughes. And it's close. Seven minutes, 35 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Rattler offense under Trey Fisher. Ball marked at the 49-yard line. Flag on the play. Delay of game is going to be called against the offense. That's going to make it third down and 16 yards to go for the Rattler offense, which on this possession is being led by Trey Fisher. Seven minutes, 12 seconds remaining in the second quarter on a beautiful afternoon here in Bragg Memorial Stadium for the Florida A&M spring game. Rattlers defending Black College National Champions are under the leadership of first-year head coach James Cozy III. Rattlers looking to repeat as national champions. Third down, 16 yards to go. Trey Fisher looking, looking, and they're going to stop this play early. And that's going to be a penalty against the offense that's going to move this ball back to about the 42-yard line of the offense. That's going to bring up third and about 21 for the offense. Six minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Fisher. 
Gives this ball up the middle to the running back. That running back is Vershad Quinn, a 5'8", 210-pound and redshirt sophomore out of Miami, Florida, attended Christopher Columbus High School. That's going to result in a change of possession and a new quarterback for the offense. We'll be back in a moment. HBCU students, are you making a difference? AT&T wants to support you in taking your dreams to new heights with a chance to win five grand and so much more. Apply now to the AT&T Rising Future Makers Showcase by uploading a video or a written submission to att.com slash RFM Showcase. Don't miss your chance to become a part of the Rising Future Makers Network for support and life-changing connections. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents, age of majority. Ends 11623. Void if prohibited. Subject to official rules. No, oh, mommy, yo estoy bien. I'm okay on money. Si, ¿Sí? y papa? Yeah, I'm starting work tomorrow, actually. Hi, can you tell me if I'm doing this right? Yeah, that looks right. Oh, yeah. Really? I think you're good. When you leave one comfort zone in search of another, Regents has the people, tools, check. and tech. I can help you with that. New job? New everything. To help you move forward faster and brave the beginning. <laughs> Triangle Sales is a proud supporter of FAMU Athletics. Triangle Sales has been the leading beverage wholesaler in the North and North Central Florida area since 1996. Our 210 knowledgeable beverage professionals service over 2,000 retail customers in our 14 county territory from our two facilities in Tallahassee and Ocala. Triangle Sales, a proud supporter of FAMU Athletics. Welcome back to the Rattler Sports Network. We're here in Tallahassee, Florida at Bragg Memorial Stadium on the beautiful campus of Florida A&M University where the Florida A&M football team, the defending black college national champions, are hosting their annual spring game. This format is a little bit different in that it's the offense versus the defense, and everybody has been focused on the quarterback battle between Junior Maritovich and Dan Richardson. Now, Richardson transferred to FAMU after stints with Central Michigan and most recently Florida Atlantic through his first season with the Rattlers and his final year of eligibility. Richardson has 32 career starts on the FBS level and quarterback Central Michigan University to a 2021 Sun Bowl victory. He'll get the snaps for the offense as they look like they're going to line this ball up at around the 23-yard line. They're still huddling right now, and so we're not sure what they're trying to accomplish in this phase of the spring game. Water break is over. Five minutes, 54 seconds remaining. The marching 100 is in attendance. And Rattler fans are shaking it up in the stands. All this to get ready for what promises to be an exciting year for Florida a and football as the Rattlers open up in August against North Fork State in Atlanta. The theme this year, start in Atlanta, end in Atlanta as the Rattlers look to participate in their second consecutive Celebration Bowl. And this is a big part of the Rattler success. This Marching 100 band, world-renowned, is shaking it up here in Bragg Memorial Stadium, entertaining this crowd as the Rattlers look to repeat as champions. Again, folks, the format dictates that it's offense against defense. Right now, there is no offensive line as Richardson fires toward the end zone, and that ball is going to be intercepted by the defense. And this is a different phase. No offensive line. Basically, the quarterback and the center going up against the defense. Again, that ball was intercepted by the dark cloud defense 
Five minutes, 24 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Richardson will get a second attempt. Right now, it's just him, the center, and three receivers. Richardson back to pass, fires. The ball is complete to his wide receiver. And look at the Rattler fan. What a nice fam, you Rattler fan. Here in Bragg Stadium. Rattlers. Offense under the direction of Dan Richardson, the transfer from Florida Atlantic University. He's lining up with a running back and four receivers going up against a dark cloud defense from the 11-yard line. Fires, completes the ball to number 21. That would be Quan Lee, a wide receiver. 5'11", 175 pounds, a red shirt sophomore out of Gainesville, Florida, attended Buholtz High School, a transfer from the University of Central Florida. So these two guys played together at Florida Atlantic at one point, but a big play for Richardson as they marked this ball at about the four-yard line. Richardson, this is all pass. Looking, 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 fires in the end zone, overshoots his receiver as the ball was intended for Quan Lee. He was defended well by the Rattler defensive back. That will introduce a new possession, which means a new quarterback. For the offense, that quarterback, is going to be Austin Hooker, six foot, 185 pounder, a red shirt junior out of Greensboro, North Carolina, attended North Carolina A&T University. He'll get his shot in the offense. Again, no offensive line is out on the field for the offense. You have a running back and four receivers. No defensive line on the field. It's essentially Wide receivers against defensive backs. Hooker fires to the running back. Correction, Quan Lee on the reception. They pick up about four yards on the play. <coughs> they will mark this ball down at around the 20-yard line for the offense. Two minutes Four seconds remaining in the second quarter. Score, seven to nothing. Offense on a big score from Maratovich to Goss. Here's Hooker looking, looking, fires toward the end zone. Looked, intercepted. Intercepted in there on the defense by T.J. Huggins. Huggins, a 6'3", 185-pound redshirt junior out of Miami, Florida, Killian High School, a transfer of Tulane. It looks like Hooker will get another possession as quarterback. Again, there's no offensive line, no defensive line. This is essentially wide receivers against defensive backs. Hooker looking, looking, fires toward the end zone, and that ball is going to be incomplete. It was intended for Jalen Howard, a 5'9", 170-pound redshirt sophomore out of Miami, Florida. 46 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. We're at Bragg Memorial Stadium on the campus of Florida A&M University where the annual spring game is taking place here at Bragg Memorial Stadium 
at Ken Raleigh Field. Here is Hooker. Fires toward end zone. Finds a man for a touchdown in there for the offense. Jalen Howard on the completion from Florida A&M. 5'9", 170-pounder out of Miami, Florida. Catches a touchdown in these drills as the clock expires in the second quarter here of the Florida A&M spring game. We'll be back in a moment. Get great seats. Safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Relax in Tallahassee at the Hampton Inn & Suites Capital University. Located between FAMU and SFU, surrounded by many restaurants, shopping, and nightlife. Enjoy free Wi-Fi, free hot breakfast, and our clean, fresh Hampton beds. Enjoy great value and experience Hamptonality. Visit Hampton.com to book your next day. Trust, loyalty, and commitment. It's the Tallahassee Police Department's core values that led me to join the force seven years ago. My name is Officer Justin Hill. TPD is looking to hire individuals with a willingness to serve. We offer up to $11,000 in hiring bonuses, competitive salary, and benefits. Be the difference you want to see. Apply today online at talgov.com forward slash join hey. TPD. Hey, Come on. At Tallahassee Orthopedic Clinic, we help our patients pursue better lives one story at a time. Whether you want to compete at the top of your game, play with your grandkids, or simply enjoy a day without pain, TOC is where you go to get better. With a patient-centered approach and unparalleled orthopedic and sports medicine care, we are here to help you live a healthy and active lifestyle. Visit TLHOC.com to learn more. Tallahassee Orthopedic Clinic, the team behind the team. FAMU football season is ready to strike. Cheer the Rattlers to victory and be entertained by the Marching 100 this football season at Bragg Memorial Stadium. When the game is over, you can explore even more excitement in Tallahassee. Explore over 700 miles of trails, sway to the rhythmic tunes at the Bradford Field Blues Club, sip on a beer from our many craft breweries, or dine at one of our incredible local restaurants. Plan your trip to the highest of seven hills at visittallahassee.com. Relax in Tallahassee at the Hampton Inn & Suites Capital University. Located between FAMU and SFU, surrounded by many restaurants, shopping, and nightlife. Enjoy free Wi-Fi, free hot breakfast, and our clean, fresh Hampton beds. Enjoy great value and experience Hamptonality. Visit Hampton.com to book your next day. Get great seats. Safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Get ready, Rattler Nation. Introducing Rattlers Plus, the ultimate digital network for all things Florida A&M sports. Catch the excitement live with exclusive coverage of Rattlers games, relive classic moments, and dive into original content that brings you closer to the action than ever before. But that's not all. Tune in to Rattlers Plus to listen to heart-pounding commentary and analysis of Rattler sports. Don't miss a beat. Subscribe to Rattlers Plus now by visiting famuathletics.com slash watch. Welcome back to the Rattler Sports Network. We're at halftime here at the Florida AM annual spring game as they're really not taking score because it should be 14 to nothing. It's the Rattler offense going up against the Rattler defense as Florida AM starts their progression toward repeating as black college national champions. As the Rattlers looking to make something happen here on the field. And they're looking good toward Florida a &M. This morning, they had coffee with Cozy in 
that Harold Hensel took center. I got a chance to catch up with the coach, and this is what he had to say this morning. There's a lot of coffee, see, so we're going to have coffee with Cozy. We'll yes, sir. That way. Yes, sir. I want to take you and start right here. You were on the staff. We won a national championship in Atlanta. Talk about that feeling, that well, fight. Well, you know, I mean, obviously the, the way the game went, you know, back and forth, you know, we, we, you know, we felt, you know, we didn't want it to be a blowout, right? We wanted to make everyone still be tuned in to the football game. But, uh, you know, obviously at the end of the day, you know, you see yourself, you know, you see yourself winning 30 to 26. I think of Isaiah Major, uh, you know, pick, you know, picking off that screenplay, uh, you know, something that we actually we should talk about weekly, you know, going through your two-minute drill, and then you start seeing the confetti and you know flying down, and the confetti is orange and green and all the other stuff. So obviously a surreal moment, you know, uh, you know, anytime you get an opportunity to be at the top of the mountain, I mean that's, that's always a blessing, and obviously we were we were very very excited. Definitely, that transitions into you being named the Florida a and head football coach. Once named, tell us about your feelings on being named. Well, you know, obviously excited, and, you know, I, got, was, you know, I told people earlier, you know, when, when, you know, when Vice President Sykes named me the interim, you know, we, we, we you know, she told me flat out, she said, hey, man, you know, act like, act like it's yours, you know, make sure you're doing everything as the head coach. So we, you know, got named in January, but... You know, and from January up, from the beginning of January up to that time, you know, we were we were doing all the things necessary to to make sure the guys had the understanding. Hey, look, that if this does happen or when it does happen. Yeah, I think obviously when you. Yeah, I think obviously when you get into championship football, uh, it, it's about the, the 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 physical and mental toughness of your team, uh, and there's no I think greater indicator of those two factors than the ability of a team to run the football and the ability of the, of the other team to stop the run. Um, so, again, uh, you know, whether you're indoors, outdoors, whatever, when you're playing football in November, December, it is physical. And, you know, 12, both teams have played 11, 12 game seasons. Physically, you beat down. Mentally, you're tired. Uh, Coach Scott and I were just talking about it. They're, doing, they're taking finals this week. Our guys are taking finals next week. So, mentally, you, you have to be in a place where you can make keep well. Um, I, I'm not – the historian, um, so I, I can't say that it's the biggest game in the history of, of HBCUs because of, of the rich history that we that we do all share. Um, you, know, you, you talk about the, the teams of Jake Gaither's era. Um, you think back to the the, the the University of Tampa game. You know when Jake took our team down to Tampa and it was the first time that an HBCU took on a, a PWI in the South, and, and, and we won that game. Uh, you talk about the 1978. National Championship game, the very first one double A national championship that Florida and them won. Uh, those are two monumental moments because of the crossover, right? Now, when you're talking about just staying within black college, um, you know, it may be right up there with it. Uh, but I, I, as I tell my team, this is the biggest game that we've ever played in. It's the most important game that we've ever played in. It's the biggest game that I've ever coached in my 18 year coaching career. Uh, but it's because it's the next one we get to play. And so we're excited about this opportunity. What you're doing, you know, he lives in South Florida. So he sent me a text message this morning, and uh, he was like, he's like, hey, James, like, when the heck did you start drinking coffee? You know, he don't, he don't even know me for almost 30 years. But, uh, so, I, you know, uh, I'm going to probably have orange juice. I've actually, believe it, I've actually never, ever had coffee in my life. But I think if I do, today will be the, the first day. Well, there's a lot of coffee. Here. I see. There's I see. a lot of coffee, see, so we're going to have coffee with Cozy. We'll yes, sir. It that way. Yes, sir. I want to take you start right here. You were on the staff. We won a national championship in Atlanta. Talk about that feeling, that well, fight. Well, you know, I mean, obviously the, the way the game went, you know, back and forth, you know, we, we, you know, we felt, you know, we didn't want it to be a blowout, right? We wanted to make everyone still be tuned in to the football game. But, uh, you know, obviously at the end of the day, you know, you see yourself, you know, you see yourself winning 30 to 26. I think of Isaiah Major, uh, you know, pick, you know, picking off that screenplay, uh, you know, something that we actually we should talk about weekly, you know, going through your two-minute drill, and then you start seeing the confetti, and you know, flying down, and the confetti is orange and green and all the other stuff. So obviously a surreal moment, you know, uh, you know, anytime you get an opportunity to be at the top of the mountain, I mean, that's, that's always a blessing, and obviously we were, we were very, very excited. Definitely. That transitions into you being named the Florida a and head football coach. 
once named. Tell us about your feelings on being named. Well, you know, obviously excited, and you know, like I was, you know, I told people earlier, you know, when, when you know, when Vice President Sykes named me the interim, you know, we, 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 you know, he told me flat out, said, hey man, you know, act like, act like it's yours, you know, make sure you're doing everything as the head coach. So we, you know, got named in January, but you know, and from January up, from the beginning of January up to that time, you know, we were, we were doing all the things necessary to, to make sure the guys had the understanding. Hey, look. That if this does happen or when it does happen, you know, we still have to make sure that we're ready for our, our drills. We have to still make sure we're ready for spring practice. So, you know, January 8th, we actually started working out. You know, we were, we were 100% in the weight room as far as doing the things necessary to get ready for this upcoming season. So, you know, even though it was I was named at that time, you know, I was still doing everything as if I would hopefully be the head coach. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about the continuity. You were in the system. So you knew the players, you knew the coaches. Talk a little bit about that transition as head coach. Well, I think it was, you know, at that time it was important to make sure that our guys felt that. You know, they, you know, they didn't really want to have a wholesale change, and I think they expressed those type of things. But while, while going through the process, you know, you have to still go through the process. So we were, you know, Coach Henry was, you know, was was acting as the offensive coordinator. You know, we, uh, Coach Patterson was acting as the defensive coordinator. We didn't want our guys to see any any drop off and all the things that we were doing because as I said earlier we were we you know you don't get ready for the season you know July twenty third or July twenty fourth. No, you get you get ready for the season once the spring started, which would have been that first week in January. So we didn't want our guys to see anything, any any hitches in the giddy up. We didn't want to see anything that, you know, would have sent or set the message that we weren't getting ready. So, you know, we we acted as such. We made sure we did the things, like I said, we did the things that those guys understood that we were going to be getting ready for the 2024 season as if that staff was going to be here. Definitely. And let's talk about the continuity of staff. Good. You named Joe Henry as the offensive coordinator, assistant head coach, and then you named a new defensive coordinator. Talk to us a little bit about those transitions for the coaches. Well, when you, when you think about the players, we, we didn't want to change our systems, right? So, you know, Coach Henry was our co-offensive coordinator. Obviously, Coach Simmons was our head coach and the offensive coordinator. But, but the Coach Henry was one of the architects that helped this offense go the way it went. So if we're talking about the continuity aspect, we wanted to make sure offensively we were still doing the same things, mm-hmm. uh, making sure we're using the same terminology. Uh, so now if we were bringing any other coaches in or any other players in, they had to learn the new terminology as Absolutely. opposed to coaches saying, hey, this is how we do it. So that was important for us on the offensive side. Coach Patterson, who was our you know, co-defensive coordinator and our defensive line coach, been in the system for over three years. Similar, you know, similar thoughts. Still going to run our 40 defense coach with, the, with running quarters behind it. So we wanted to keep that the same. You know, obviously the, the dark cloud and you know, all the nicknames that they give the defense, we wanted to continue to do those things that have made the defense as, as what it was. So even though we did lose our defensive coordinator to another institution, again, we still wanted to make sure that we were still doing the same things on both sides of the football and also including our special teams. And this past week, you ended up hiring – a defensive back coach. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, Andre Pope was a guy that, you know, you know, you go back with similar to, to me and some guys that, you know, guys that I can trust. And, and Andre Pope played for me at West Georgia in, in 2010, and he was a really, really good player for us. Don't let him tell you how good he thought he was. He was, you know, he was, he was he'll tell you he was great, but he, got, he was above average, right? Um, but, you know, he was a guy that had gone through, he, you know, he's, he played, then he, then he went the GA route, and he was a guy that, we you know, we stayed in constant communication. And then, obviously, you know, Coach Morgan, who did a really, really good job for us, and a guy that I still trust and talk to on a daily basis, who got an opportunity to be a head coach. Well, when he, when Coach Morgan left, I already knew that, you know, Coach Pope would be the guy that I could say, hey, I want you to take care of the back end, and I trust to know that you're going to do exactly how Coach Morgan did for me, like, did, you know, did together over the last two years. So, through the spring, that's your old position, correct? Yes. Defensive back. He's up under a real challenge because he replaces you. Well, we know we, we use a lot of the same verbiage. You know, he, he coached the safeties. You know, I, I'm not I'm not necessarily ready yet to give up the corners, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, you know, we you know we do a lot of the same things. You know, he came from Alabama State, who was also extremely successful on the defensive side. They run similar schemes, but I know it's, uh, ultimately with how close Coach Morgan and I were over the last two years, I thought it was important to make sure that, that relationship stayed the same once Coach Morgan left. And, and that made, uh, you know, Coach Pope was the ideal candidate. And to be honest with you, you know, he was the candidate that I wanted for that position. Definitely. Folks, we are going into this season 
and we have a battle at quarterback. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about the offense and start right there at quarterback. Well, you know, you, you talk about a guy like Junior who has been in the system for over two years, and then you bring a guy in who has thrown for over 6,000 yards at the Division One level, right? So, I mean, I, I will say this to everyone in here. We will not name a quarterback today. I promise you. <laughs> we will not name any type of quarterback starter today for a mo you know, multitude of reasons. But, uh, you know, those two guys have come in. You know, Daniel came in January. Like I said, Junior's been over here, you know, two to three seasons. You know, these are guys that have got to be able to be the leaders. It's not just coming in there and just throwing the football around. But they got to be able to control the locker room, be the guy, you know, be the face of the program, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, those are two guys that have done everything I've asked them to do. They've come and done a really, really good job. You know, we, we, we mix them up. We'll have Junior one day go with the ones, and then Daniel Richardson go with the twos. Gotcha. And then the next day, we'll swap them out. And, uh... You know, our quarterback coach, Coach Henry, being an offensive coordinator, they evaluate and assess them in every single thing that we do, that, that they do, and you know, we, and we we speak daily about how they're doing. So, we'll, when we do decide to make the decision, we'll have all the information in front of us to let us know who the guy should be. It all starts up at front, in the front with our offensive line. Talk to us about our offensive line. Well, most experienced group, I, I, in my opinion, I think our best position group, and I'm taking them over our defensive line and our defensive backs, but, you know, if we're going to be as successful as we need to be, our guys in front have got to be really, really good. So, you know, we were, you know, we get a chance to get Jalen Goss back, preseason All-American, preseason All-Conference. He had an injury which was going to allow him to come back. I like to think our athletic department to make sure that we did everything that we did to get him back. Because he's extremely important to what we're trying to do offensively. But then you got T.J. Lee. You got Ashton Grable, right? You got Cesar Reyes. A lot of guys that have played a lot of snaps and were really, really helpful to us winning a national championship this past year. So those guys are back to go along with some of the guys that were backups that, are, that got valuable experience in the season or getting valuable experience during the spring. So that group is, is what I think they will be. You know, it, it, it will be really, really good. You talk about the running back position that goes along with the offensive line. You got Yan from Tallahassee. You got Kelvin Dean from Chipley. You got Bo Somerset who's coming in. So, you know, hey, I'm a defensive guy, and I've realized that it's extremely hard for the defense to give up any points when they're on the sidelines. Right? So if our offense is running the football, we're running the clock, and we're getting, you know, we're getting chunks and chunks of yardage, I think we'll be okay on the offensive side of the football. Last Back live here at Bragg Memorial Stadium with at the start of the third quarter here at the annual Florida a and Spring Game. It's the offense against the defense. You just heard from head coach James Cozy III in his first year as head football coach here at Florida A&M. We'd like to apologize from some technical difficulties. I believe you may have heard Willie Simmons. No, he's not back. As the coach at Florida A&M, as the offense and the defense are getting set to go at it. Right now at this phase of the spring game, a little bit different type of mix going on. They're actually working on the kicking game right now. And they will continue to work in this phase of the game. It is a new spin under head coach James Cozy. We're standing by to interview Gerald Thomas, a reporter from the Tallahassee Democrat who covers Florida A&M University as the kicking game. It should be in really good shape for Florida A&M this year. And Gerald, welcome to the Rattler Sports Network. Hey, it's always good to have me here. Um, spring game. This is my second spring game here at FAMU, so always exciting times. Definitely. Gerald is in the booth for this interview. As you know, I'm going solo today. My co-art, Albert Chester, is the public uh, address announcer today. And Gerald so kindly it came into my booth. Gerald, first of all, it's been spring practice, 15 practices for the Rattlers. Let's start right there with their new head coach, James Cozy. Yeah, uh, James Cozy, honestly, he's been a pleasure to work with. Um, he's came in and, and really 
just fit right in, adapted well, you know, as being the head coach. And I think he has the command of the locker room. Um, he has – he knows the temperature of the team. And I think he feels very confident about this team. I know he wants to make, you know, some additions as this transfer portal opens up. So uh, I think he'll do well as the head coach. I think the guys respect him. And I think they're they're really motivated, even though it's a new look type of team. I think they're really motivated to get back to that championship game. Definitely. And you talk about new looks. What about the spring game? Is a little bit different than it was under Willie Simmons, where they drafted players. There was an orange and a green sky. This time, it's offense against defense. But at this point, with 12 minutes, 9 seconds remaining in the third quarter, they're working on the kicking game. Yeah, that's something. The kicking game, that's something that even when Coach Simmons was here, was here he held it in a high regard. And Coach Cozy has done the same. Um, even during the spring practices, the the specialists were the ones that decided the end of practice yes. conditioning, uh, you know. So if the quick if the kickers are making their field goals, the less the team runs. Uh, the more they make their field goals, uh, uh, or the more field goals they make, they won't be doing much running. So uh, that's something that he holds in a very high regard. So it's not surprising to see that he has a has a reserve period to see uh, you know how the kicking game looks in a game like setting. You got the fans that brag and. And uh, you got the game jerseys on, just game day type of environment. Definitely. I'm Melvin Beal here along with Gerald Thomas. We're here at Bragg Memorial Stadium for the annual spring game. We have 11 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter in a different format. As I explained earlier, they're working on the kicking game. Gerald, I think the highlight for most people coming into this season is the battle at quarterback. Yep, everybody been asking me, who you think the quarterback going to be? Who you think the quarterback going to be? Um, it's been a very it's been a very back and forth battle. Um, you know, throughout the quarterback. I mean, I see they gave Daniel Richardson the best quarterback for the spring yeah. award uh, during yeah, halftime. But if you look at today, I mean, Junior Muratovi, he's been he his drive that he came in, he did pretty well. Moved the ball down the field. Um, got the touchdown to Kobe Gross. Uh, had a good had a good throw to Ja'Cory Jordan, who actually was a quarterback. Yeah, now he's yeah. a wide receiver. So, Junior, he's putting on a pretty good show. And Dan Richardson, of course, he's made his few mistakes, tip balls, turned to interceptions. But just because one quarterback may outshine another one in spring, and don't, I don't want people for one second to think that this quarterback battle is over. Absolutely not. And Trey Fisher got an opportunity to perform as well. Yeah, Trey Fisher, he's – Trey Fisher definitely have his moments. Well, he's like, you know, that's a – you know, you see the quarterback that 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 played locally at Gobby in, in North Florida Christian. Uh, he's definitely had it had his moments. Of course, he hasn't been able to get on the field much because I mean, only one quarterback can play, and fam, you usually have five, six, maybe even seven quarterbacks at times. Um, so, but when he gets his opportunity to play, you know, even in a practice setting, setting, he does well, and he's been doing pretty good uh, for this spring game also. Florida A&M has had a few players to enter this transfer portal. Now, while they haven't committed to a particular school, how has it changed the way we look at this Florida A&M team? Yeah, I mean, I tell people, like, I, I tell people that nowadays you can't really put too much stock in, in the spring, in the spring practice, spring game, because you may not have that standout player that did well in the spring game with the transfer portal. Um, or you may not get your best player that's going to be on the, the, the upcoming team until the summertime, right. two weeks before training camp, you know, whatever, whenever they may arrive. Um, so it's definitely changing. Of course, NIL, it, it plays a – it's kind of goes – it's kind of similar to, like, professional free right. agency. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's like free agency. I mean, you know, you don't have to sit out that one year, um, you know, for transferring anymore, so it's kind of like you know a year to year basis. You never know who's going to return. You never know who's who's going to stay. So it's just all about coaches having to have a plan, having an action plan to be able to you know be able to recoup losses and and just keep bringing in talent and re hopefully retaining them. You know, the big thing, Gerald, is that we always talk about recruiting players, but it's a different game now. You talk a guy a guy like Anthony Dunn. You talk about gentle hunt 
I even learned that it's a little bit different for our, a graduate student because they can transfer, get, enter the transfer portal at any time. But it is huge when you start thinking about the living expenses and what other people are offering out there. It is an amazing change in college football. Yeah, definitely. Um, like you said, graduate students, they can – they can jump in the portal whenever they want. Yes. They can jump. They might can jump in the portal the day before <laughs> the first game of the season. Right. They might can jump in the portal during the middle of the season. It don't matter during the middle of the game. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it takes a. It takes a. You know, like I said, it's a lot of schools that's out here. You know, especially when you're winning. You know, fam, you just won the won the black college football national championship. Right. So, of course. You know, when, when people see success, you know, they're going to want to, yes. you know, poach from that. You know, Willie Simmons is at Duke now, um, an assistant coach at Duke now. Um, Ryan Smith, defensive coordinator, he's at Murray State. Right. So, you know, when people see see winning, they're like, they got something going on over there. So, it's going to come with coaches. It's going to come with players. And it just that's just a new climate of college, college sports. Yes. And I think what's interesting, Gerald, for the HBCUs is NIL. Because the money is not the same as the Power Fives, but there is something being done called a collective at North Carolina A and T. Do you think we'll see that at Florida and M? Yeah, I think it's I think it's on the way, um, especially with fam. You just reached the mountaintop of HBCU football this past season, and to see how how many players are leaving in the portal, you know, trying to, and I mean, this is various reasons. That, Players may leave. Some of them may just want to move up to the to the to the FBS level, but some may, you know, living expenses, like you said. Um, oh, yeah, reception. <laughs> yeah. Um, but <laughs> I got got a little caught up in the game. No, a we bit. should be. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it just um, it it just it just the landscape of college athletics nowadays. Um, you know, HBCUs. I definitely think is on the way for NIL collectives. I mean, HBCUs have big alumni bases. Um, and, you know, a lot of people go into business, business owners. So, you know, it, NIL can be anything. You know, NIL can be yeah. somebody that owns yeah. a, a barbecue food truck and, and you <laughs> just got to record a, a commercial, you eating some ribs, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and, and, and it may not be on the larger scale as players get NILs with Nike and Reebok, McDonald's. But, I mean, at the end of the day, money is money. And uh, that's somebody that's looking out for you, you know, and trying to keep you – uh, with the program. So it's definitely something that I think will be on the way for FAMU. Definitely. Six minutes, 20 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Scores probably doesn't matter right now, but that was a big interception in there. Dan Richardson was the quarterback for Florida a and It was picked off by a Florida a and defensive back. Gerald, you mentioned that we lost a couple of coaches. Let's talk a little bit about Head coach Joe, well, uh, assistant head coach, our associate head coach, Joe Henry, and his new role. And he did offensive coordinator. He was the offensive coordinator last year, but this year he gets to call plays. Yeah, exactly. Uh, coach Joe Henry, that's one of my favorite coaches on yeah, the staff. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, I know I'm not supposed to choose favorite, but, you know, coach, <laughs> coach Joe Henry, he's one of my favorite coaches on the staff. And I'm actually happy to see him get that assistant head coach role um, and be able to call the plays. Um, so, you know, I think it's an opportunity that he that he really uh, relishes. And, I mean, he has power five experiences. He he went to LSU. He, he went and coached at LSU. He went and coached at Arkansas, Missouri. Um, yeah. So, you know, he has, you know, he has that. You know, he went and scavenged a little bit and, and came back to FAMU to kind of bring that knowledge back. So, uh, to see him get it is very – is very um, – you know, it, it warms your heart a little bit because, you know, he was here when Willie Simmons first got here. Right. You know, Willie Simmons brought him with him. Um, but, you know, now he's 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 tasked with making maybe one of the most important decisions yeah. he's ever had yeah. um, in his coaching career, deciding who's going to be QB1. Yes. And also, I mean, game to game, he's going to have to decide what plays <laughs> are we going to run. So he's right. going to have big responsibilities. But uh, I think he'll do well in making sure the team stays on schedule and their offensive schemes and – and um, at the end of the day, he'll make whatever decision is right for for quarterback. We're talking with Gerald Thomas, a reporter for the Tallahassee Democrat. He is the beat writer for Rattler Athletics. And you broke down in an article today, Players to Watch. We talked about Dan Richardson. We talked about Maritovich. But you are excited about Jeremiah Pruitt. 
Yeah, Jeremiah Pruitt. Uh, I've seen Jeremiah Pruitt have so many like great catches, you know, during the practice. And I know FAMU, they love using their tight ends. And, you know, with a guy like Kamari Young graduating out, it's like it's Jeremiah's Pruitt time. He's the longest tenured tight end at FAMU now. And uh, he just adds a different element. You know, nowadays in in football, oftentimes tight ends are just big receivers. Like when you look at a guy like Kyle Pitts for the Atlanta Falcons. Right, right, you know, he's right. just a, He's a big receiver. He can play, plays tight end. Uh, so Jeremiah Pruitt is similar to that. Uh, he he played at Colorado State before he came to FAMU, and he Correct. actually was a receiver. I believe he was a three star receiver coming out of high school mm-hmm. um, up in Atlanta and went to Colorado State. So uh, that's a guy that I'm really excited about. I I love to see him get more touches and really see him get out there and run in the open field and and um, you know and, and break some tackles and yes. things like that. But <laughs> but yeah, that's a guy that I think that's a guy that I think that's going to do well this season. I believe this is his last year of uh, eligibility, and he has pro size. Yes, he does. He has pro size, so um, so it's going to be interesting to see what he, see what he do uh, this season. Yeah, he caught 13 passes for 202 yards and a touchdown. He should be very, very exciting. Now, we'll turn our attention to the other side of the ball, and an area of concern for me is the defensive line. When you start talking about Jenna Hunt may not be back, Anthony Dunn, may not be back. There is a guy that is emerging, James Ash. James Ash, yeah. James Ash, he's another guy that has professional size. Um, seats four, like 280. He played at uh, Wake Forest before he got here to FAMU. And uh, that's a guy that they're very excited about. You know, he's going to be that, that interior defensive lineman. Uh, he's going to have to, you know, hold down that spot, hold down one of those spots. You know, I know he used to playing alongside Geno Hunt. But um, you know, he's gonna be the guy that's that they really look to really galvanize that that front end on the defensive side. So um, you know, I think he's gonna wreak a lot of havoc. You know, he was a guy that played a lot last season. I think he picked up about a little over thirty tackles. So um so I'm excited to see what he does too, especially as one of the main guys in the defensive scheme. Back here live at Bragg Memorial Stadium at Ken Riley Field. I'm Melvin Beal here along with Gerald Thomas. We have Five minutes and 36 seconds remaining in the third quarter as the offense is going up against the defense here in the annual spring game here at Bragg Stadium. At quarterback right now, it's tough for me to see. Is that Richardson? It's DJ Boney. DJ Boney. Talk a little bit about him. DJ Boney, a kid from IMG. I believe he's from Orlando, I believe. Okay. Uh, No, he's a Florida kid. Um, but he got here last season. Um, you know, of course they had the moose last season and, you know, junior, those were guys that was in front of him. But, um, you know, I, I believe he has, um, extra years of eligibility even after this season. And, um, you know, I think he can be a guy that, that'll be a serviceable quarterback, uh, if called upon, you know, he's a speedy guy. Um, you know, still trying to get used to the system a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, but, I mean, he played at IMG Academy, so, you know, yeah. he got you know, to be pretty good. Definitely. DJ Boney is the quarterback. He's 6'3", 210 pounds, a redshirt junior out of Orlando, Florida, went to IMG Academy, a transfer of Eastern Kentucky. So he brings in some experience for Florida and m as they put the ball down at about the 28-yard line. Right now, Gerald, it's been tough for me because I can't tell if it's first down, second down, or third down. But this is a different format right Right now designed to highlight the special skills on offense and defense. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, that's what comes with with having a new coach. You know, they're going to bring in things yeah. that they're going to bring in things that they want to implement. And it may be confusing at first, but as Cozy Tenner continues and he get into his second spring game in in 2025 and 2026 and however long he ends up being here at FAMU, people probably get more used to it. Or he may fine tune some things. Hey, I didn't like how this went for this spring game. Right. We're going to do it different next year. So. It just, it, I think he's just trying to, you know, figure out what things, like how, how can he mainly highlight, you know, his. Into, I think the main thing is he wants everyone to play. Definitely, that's the big thing. Definitely, everyone, every everyone gets a chance to play in these type of formats. So you know, it gives them a chance to really get those in game reps, get some film, and really be able to evaluate how they did in a, in a real live game setting. And he's also aware, Gerald, that 
it's important that you don't come out of this with any major injuries. Normally when you're going full bore, Florida a has suffered some injuries in the spring game right now. So the goal is to get everybody playing time, as you stated earlier, but to come out of this game healthy. Definitely, definitely. Always. You want to come out of spring healthy. You want to come out of – come out of the spring game healthy you want to come out of fall training camp healthy you want to come out of the season healthy but you know that's just the nature of the beast injuries are always happen at a certain point in the season everyone is injured definitely you know what i mean <laughs> um so just to come out you know with no major injuries that'll be a big blessing to the team and you know you just want to go in full strength when you when when summer workouts begin and fall training camp you want to come in and not have to wait for or we waiting for him to get back or we got to ease him back into the lineup uh, you just want to just have that health. And at the end of the day, like they say, health is wealth. <laughs> Definitely. Health is wealth. I like that. Yeah. One minute, 19 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Quarterback on offense for Florida a and is T.J. Boney. I'm here with Gerald Thomas of the Tallahassee Democrat. He's the beat writer. And we were talking about positions. One of the interesting positions this year for this Florida a and football team is linebacker. You have to replace Isaiah Major. And Johnny Chaney entered the transfer portal what do you think about that position yeah um i definitely think they're going to hit i think famu is going to hit the portal hard mm. looking for those linebackers a uh, guy like eric horn he's really he's number five um on defense he's he's really looking um to be one of those main linebacker guys you know really um accelerate and elevate his role um he's a guy that arrived here in in 2022 mm. and um you know he's just he's he's the, the linebacker room is thin right now. You yeah, know, it is. When you lose a guy like Isaiah Major and you lose another all swag performer like Johnny Chaney, um, guys who was here last year, Jordan Moore, you know, that linebacker room was very deep last year. So uh, so I think Eric Horn, I think he's really going to take it on. He has power five experience. He played at Iowa State. Right. Um, so I think he's capable. Last year he was kind of rotates no peas because – it, like I said, it was so many linebackers. Right. Uh, but I think he'll do well at the position, you know, just holding down the fort. He's very experienced, and and I think they think they got him a guy there. You know, they just want to fill out the rest of the defense. Definitely. You alluded earlier that Florida a lost a defensive coordinator to Murray State. Uh, introducing a new defensive coordinator. What do you think from that position at defensive coordinator? Yeah, well, Mil well Coach Milton Patterson, um, new defensive coordinator, I mean, he's been here since 2021. Right. He has the formula. He's seen the top <laughs> defenses. He's He's been here when Marquise Bell was starring on Saturday nights. He was here when he, his first year here, Isaiah Lamb won the best, won the defensive player of the year for the, for the FCS. That's right. You know, so, you know, he has that experience of really being able to develop guys. Kamari Stevens, that's another guy. He went into the portal last year, but he credited Coach Milton Patterson into a lot of his uh, his development. So, uh, so you know, I think he'll – like I said, he, he has the formula. I think he can really galvanize this defensive this, – this defensive – the dark cloud defense, um, you know, for FAMU. And, and he's been here for a while. You know, the players know him. The players like him. And, um, you know, he's also moving on over to – the linebackers instead of coaching yeah. defensive line. Yeah. But I was, he played linebacker in college. He played at uh at the school in uh Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> um, <laughs> the school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, so yeah, so yeah. So he so he played at he played he played over there. So I mean, you know, there's nothing that, that he's um that he's not used to. And also he has he did the NFL Bill Walsh uh, fellowship last year with the Tennessee Titans, so very experienced coach that they have. Definitely, and I thought a strength coming into this year, but again, you can't really tell, was the defensive backfield. And uh, it's actually an interesting position because that's where Coach Cozy came from, the defensive backfield. Your assessment on that position? Yeah, defensive backs, of course, you got a guy like Kendall Bowler. He was an All-American selection last year. And we were just talking in the press, while it was like, Kendall, he 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 only caught one interception last year, but he got a a bunch of pass breakups. And we said when a cornerback has low stats, that's usually <laughs> a good thing. I mean, a right, lot of people, right. a lot of people, a lot of people aren't trying to throw it his way. So you know, you got you got him coming back, and then you got a transfer, Demory Tate from Florida State. Um, he transferred over. He he got to Florida State in 2020, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Mike Norvell's highest rated recruit ever, and now he's playing at FAMU. So he's a guy that's really think he's going to play with a chip on his shoulder this season. He's making his return to football. He didn't play on the team last year. Um, oh, that was a good that's hit. That's a good hit, yeah. yeah. That was a good hit. Opie 
He's got old. a K. Yeah, got a couple guys that's down. Down, right. Yeah, but uh, Demory Tate, he's a guy that's um that 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 I look for. I'm I'm really intrigued to see how he's going to play this year. Definitely in the quarterback position for the offense right now is Junior Maritovich, and he is getting his reps there. You know, when you start talking about him as quarterback, we talked about him a little bit earlier. There's a legitimate battle going on right there, and he knows the system because he's been here at Florida and M. Exactly, and that's what makes it so interesting about this uh about this quarterback battle because Junior Muratovic has been in the system since 2021. Yeah. But Daniel Richardson has the most in-game experience. Yes. So that's what makes it. It's like, which one is going to rise to the top? Will it be the experience? <laughs> like It's like they both have experiences but different type of experiences. Mm-hmm. You know, Junior has been at FAMU. Richardson has been – you know, just been around the block. Yeah, won, Central Michigan. Yeah, he won. A, he won the twenty twenty one Sun Bowl. That's right. As Central That's Michigan's right. quarterback. So, uh, man, it's just going to be real interesting. Like I said, I, the, the, today isn't going to settle the quarterback battle. Not at the all. The quarterback battle isn't going to be settled tomorrow. It probably won't be settled until it's time to get ready to go back to Atlanta uh, to play in the Miac Swag <laughs> Champion, uh, the Miac Swag Challenge against uh, Norfolk State. Definitely, and I think the T-shirt is start in Atlanta, end in Atlanta. Yeah. That's what you want for the Florida a and football team to exactly. repeat as black college national champions. Exactly. It's, it's so – it's so. Um, what can I say? Uh, it's, 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 I guess it's just, it's, it's just crazy how, how, you know, they play in one of the biggest games in the, in, in the program's yeah. history in Atlanta. And FAMU has – before the celebration mall, it was a while before FAMU – since fam, you played in the city of Atlanta. That's and, you true. Know, Atlanta is very important. It's very symbolic to fam. You, um, of course, Atlanta has a very high black population. Right. Um, but fam, a lot of fam, you alone migrate to Atlanta once they graduate, or a lot of a lot of people that attended fam, you are from Atlanta. Um, so it's good to see fam, you really getting back to Atlanta and getting back to that base because that has been such a such a uh, great location. For the university. Definitely. And Florida a and will open a season against Norfolk State. They're in Atlanta. They'll play that game at Georgia State's uh, stadium there in Atlanta. And you're right. I've been forever wanting Florida a and back in Atlanta. They played there for over 20 years against Tennessee State yep. in the 100 Black Men's Atlanta Football Classic. I often thought, Gerald, Personally, that it would have been nice to see Florida A&M match up against Kennesaw State. They have our former athletic director, Milton Overton. It puts Florida A&M back in Atlanta in a very competitive game that could potentially be sold out. So it's good to see the Florida A&M back in Atlanta. At quarterback, again, is Maritovic for Florida A&M. We have 49 seconds remaining in the third quarter. I'm here with Gerald. Thomas of the Tallahassee Democrat. He's the beat writer for Florida A&M. And, Gerald, you on a personal level have a lot of things going on right now working on that grad degree. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, education. You know, <laughs> you know, they always say get your education first. It's something that nobody can ever take from you. Uh, so, yeah, so currently working towards my master's degree. I never thought I was going to go back to school. <laughs> um, you know, my, my, when I graduated my undergrad degree, when my undergrad degree, uh, you know, my mom said, you're going to go back eventually. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not going back in. She ended up being right. So now, so now you know, I you know I got to say, oh, mom, you was right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, working on my, my degree in sports management uh, at FAMU. And it's been it's been a great um, – it's, it's been a great experience uh, attending FAMU and, and really attending the HBCU because I feel like, you know, every time I step on campus, I'm amongst black excellence. Yes. And um, it's just great. You know, all my family that attended college went to HBCUs. You know, I'm from Savannah, Georgia. A lot of my family attended Savannah State. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I know I didn't I didn't wear the orange and blue, but, <laughs> you know, I still got a little bit of orange. I got, I got some orange in, you know, where I attend. So, so it's been very good, you know, just getting that HBCU ed- education. It changes your mindset a little bit. And um, and I've really just been enjoying it. And I, I can't wait till it's time to walk across the stage with the confetti falling, um, you know, this upcoming December. That's a big run in yeah. here by this running back as he rips off a, a big run trying to get his number in there. It looks like it's number 20 oh, yeah. for Levant- Florida a and yeah. Levante Somerset, yeah, he's a guy that arrived here last year. Um, he's, he, they actually call him Bo. 
Uh, he said his grandma gave him the nickname Bo because as a kid he played all type of sports. Uh, <laughs> so she named him after Bo Jackson. Um, you know, he's a guy. He had some opportunities to play on the power five level. Nate Tennessee was trying to get him. Um, but, you know, he chose to come to FAMU. Say he had a cousin that attended FAMU years ago. Um, and uh, I think he's going to be a – I think he's a rising star for this program. You know, Gerald, we were talking about the spring. You got a chance to cover Florida a and during the spring. Of course, it culminates in this spring game right here. Your feelings about this team moving forward this year? Yeah, I feel like this team can do well. Of course, you've got a lot of gaps to fill. Um, so, But I feel like this team can still be in the mix for the swag. Um I think it's. I think this year for the swag, it's gonna be a three-legged race. I think it's gonna be FAMU, Alabama State, and Jackson. Yes. Um. You know, to come out the, the East Division, and I was, and I feel like it's gonna be an East team that wins the, the swag, swag championship. Okay. Okay. Um. So you know they want to fill those gaps. These guys are motivated to go back to that championship game. Um. I think now I feel like regardless before the coaching change, they would be motivated to repeat. But now they have that element of. We have a new coach. People are counting us out. You know, we got a new system. People are counting us out. Players are entering the portal. People are counting Count us, us out. out. Right. So uh, I think that's going to really motivate them this season. I think it's going to be – I think FAMU is going to see themselves in a lot of slugfests because now that they've been on the mountaintop of HBCU football, they're going to get a lot of teams' best shot. And uh, I think it's about to be a fun season. I'm Melvin Beal here along with Gerald Thomas, the beat writer for the Florida A&M Rattlers, working with the Tallahassee Democrat. We've just entered the fourth quarter as the offense is getting ready to threaten this Rattler defense. There's Maritovic, and he completes the ball. That's going to be a touchdown. That's going to be a touchdown Ja'Cory for Corey Jordan. For, yes, Ja'Cory, Ja'Cory Jordan. Jordan. Yep. And we said that he used to be a quarterback. Is yep. that correct? Yep, used to be a quarterback. Uh, um Made the transition to wide receiver, and he has – he he looks like a wide receiver. He does. He looks he like really a wide does. receiver. And I think that was a very good move for his career. Um, because, I mean, like I said, only one quarterback can play. That's right. You know, um, and wide receiver was his best opportunity to get on the field, and he's really – taking advantage of it. And he almost had a touchdown early Early, in the game. yes. And so it's, so it's kind of good to see him get in on the end zone this time and, you know, kind of be able to taste that feeling of how I feel to, you know, reach pay dirt. So, uh, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see him at, at wide receiver. Um, and, you know, that was a little quarterback-to-quarterback connection just now. <laughs> <laughs> when we return, we're going to talk a little bit about the kicking game. You're in tune to the Rattler Sports Network. We'll be back in a moment. Get ready, Rattler Nation. Introducing Rattlers Plus, the ultimate digital network for all things Florida A&M sports. Catch the excitement live with exclusive coverage of Rattlers games, relive classic moments, and dive into original content that brings you closer to the action than ever before. But that's not all. Tune in to Rattlers Plus to listen to heart-pounding commentary and analysis of Rattler sports. Don't miss a beat. Subscribe to Rattlers Plus now by visiting famuathletics.com slash watch. Trust, loyalty, and commitment. It's the Tallahassee Police Department's core values that led me to join the force 16 years ago. My name is Officer Damon Miller, Jr. TPD is looking to hire individuals with a willingness to serve. We offer up to $11,000 in hiring bonuses, competitive salary, and benefits. Apply today online at talgov.com forward slash join TPD. Be the difference you want to see. Tallahassee Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat has been focused on our commitment to exceptional customer service since 2000. With a friendly and knowledgeable sales team, they are dedicated to going above and beyond for the customers in the Tallahassee community. As a local business, we believe in giving back to the community in which we live and work. We support local organizations like the Leon County Schools, and we are a proud sponsor of Family Athletics. If you're looking to buy a new, certified, pre-owned, and used vehicle in the Tallahassee, Florida area, visit Tallahassee. Tallahassee, DCJ.com. Go Welcome back to Tallahassee, Florida. We're on the beautiful campus of Florida A&M University here on the campus of FAMU. That's what they call us, FAMU. 
as the annual spring game is taking place here on campus. The format is offense against defense. I have joining me here in the booth, Gerald Thomas, the beat writer for the floor, for the Tallahassee Democrat. And, Gerald, we were talking about Ja'Cory Jordan, who just scored a touchdown for Florida A&M. We didn't talk about special teams and the kicking game. Your assessment? Yeah, special teams, like uh, I alluded to earlier, uh, they determined the – the, the end of practice conditioning. <laughs> but, um, but you know, they've been doing pretty well. Uh, Trey Wilhoyd, I was just talking about in the press, I was like, he was like top five in punting average um, in the entire nation. So, uh, you know, they got that return. And he's a local, he's a local kid. So, you know, um, you know, he has a, you know, he has a deeper love than the, than the, you know, normal player, you know, since, you know, he's grew up around FAMU. Right. Um, and, and, you know, so he actually chose to come back in town uh, last year. Uh, so, you know, you got that coming back. And then Cameron Gillis, he's also back. Um, he was an all swag kicker all last swag. year. Uh, he's actually from uh, Hungary. He said he's from Budapest, Be- Be- yes. Hungary. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how he, I'm not sure how he, maybe he's a military kid. I didn't, I didn't ask him how he's from there, but, um, but uh, I'll definitely uh, ask him next time I talk to him. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got both of those guys coming back. Uh, you got a few new guys. Um, you got a um, uh, kicker from um, Florida State, Max Larson. You know, you got a got a big leg. Um, you know, he he does well. He does well kicking. You know, you got a you know strong leg. You know, they got a lot of guys that that can that can really go out there and boot it. Definitely. And you know, when you start talking, those are a bunch of characters on the kicking team. They made uh, they went viral. We yeah. were broadcasting the game, and they started dancing. And I kind of played with them a little bit there uh, on uh, the commentary. But uh, definitely an important part of this football team. Gerald, we didn't talk about the rushing attack here at Florida and the running backs. Um, stack room there. Yeah, of course. Um, it was similar like that last year. You know, you had Terrell Jennings and Jaquez Yan and – Kelvin Dean, the Celebration Bowl MVP. Yes. Um, and this year, Jaquez Yan and Kelvin Dean are both back. Uh, and Jaquez Yan, he's really, he's, he's really like he's trimmed down a little bit. Um, like he, you know, he's he's knocked off a little bit of weight, and I think that's going to help him with his with with his burst. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just breaking out of the backfield, and maybe he won't be one of he'll still be one of those guys that can get you short short field you know, first downs and, and all the type of stuff. But he also may be a guy that can break one on you too with just, you know, just shedding a little bit of weight. And everybody already know what Kelvin Dean can do. He showed in the Celebration Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. And something that stuck out, another interception. These guys yes. are doing really <laughs> yeah. well at at uh, at forcing turnovers. They have like five or six today. Yeah, Interceptions is yeah. dark cloud defense. And, folks, again, the format is offense against defense. And the defense has just uh, picked off another one. He took it to the house yes, as well. So, big play there. There. But we were talking about the running backs, and we talked about what Kelvin Dean was able to do in the Celebration Bowl. It is going to be interesting to me to see the development of the wide receivers. Yeah, wide receivers. I've noticed that you know it's a different era for wide receivers here at FAMU. It's no more of the the, the short wide receiver, right? the short and speedy right. wide receivers. Right. They want those guys that that got some size on them. <laughs> um, so so it's, it's a, it'll be. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see those guys come out. Uh, you got guys like Ace Cobb. You know, he played with Daniel Richardson last year at Florida and Atlantic. So, you know, of course, they got prior chemistry. They got prior relationships. Um, even a guy, Omari Johnson, he hasn't started practicing yet, but he's been out here coming from UCF. He's one of those guys that's more of the mold of the short, speedy receiver. But uh, him and Dan Richardson also have prior relationships. They played together in high school. Exactly. Yeah, in exactly. City. So, so uh so you know those guys, they just keep building up connection. We we talked we talked about Jacory Jordan, Jamari Gassett. Yes, he's back. Yes, he's back. He's yeah. back. So uh, you know, and Jamar Gassett, he can be one of those guys like K. Dot was a season ago, and just just one of those guys that can get it and and, and take off. You know, he can be one of those guys that can get an end around and and burst one for a touchdown. So you know, a lot of depth in the receiver room. Definitely, and you can't do anything on offense without those big guys up front, the offensive line. That may be a strength. Yeah, the offensive line really returns a lot. Um, you know, they, of course, they lost they lost uh, Cardell Thomas to the right. transfer portal, right. but uh, Jalen Goss is making his return back to football. Of course, he got injured. Uh, I believe the Alabama State game and was out for the season, so uh, was able to was able to get a, a medical red shirt and, and play his 
final season. So I know he's looking forward to, you know, playing a healthy year, uh, being able to return from injury. Uh, T.J. Lee, another guy that can, yeah. he can play guard, he can play center, wherever you need him, you know, he can play it. Um, another guy that people may not really know is Ricky Taylor. Um, a, a shorter lineman, but, you know, he's a very physical guy. You know, I saw him go out there and, you know, really, you know, be dominant, you know, on the front end. So, uh, that offensive line is a, is a strength. Coach Henry works a lot with them, you know, just because he's the <laughs> offensive coordinator yes, and the play caller, you know, those are still his guys. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he's put together a solid bunch. Definitely. And, Gerald, we appreciate you dropping by. We know that you're working with the Tallahassee Democrat. Uh, just the insight that you bring to this table has been refreshing. You've been there. You've been watching these guys practice at 6 a.m. practices, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> so they did keep that from Willie Simmons. <laughs> yes, sir. Huh? Yeah, that thing is really interesting. But I'd be remiss if I didn't revisit the Willie Simmons situation. Did you see that coming, him leaving? Uh, I mean – it was going to happen eventually, you know, because at the end of the day, a man has dreams, and yes. Coach Simmons want to be able to be able to uh, coach on the highest level. I know I had a conversation with Coach Simmons um, last year before the team went to go play against uh, University of South Florida, and he said, "I don't want to just be known as a great black coach. Right. I want to be known as a great coach. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something that I think every coach should strive for." And, um, you know, it, you know, it's going to happen eventually. And, um, you know, you just got to have, you know, you got to, you, you got to have a plan, you know, when, when that, when that happens, because like I said, with success, people are going to, people are going to try to poach what you got because they see, Hey, they got some type of winning recipe over there. And, uh, you know, we, we trying to get a taste of it. So, uh, Definitely. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, but I'm happy for him. Uh, I'm happy for his opportunity at Duke. And I think, in about two to three years, he'll, he'll be a head coach. Somewhere. You know, Gerald, what's interesting, though, the Georgia State position became available. Yep. And he was interviewed for that position. Yep. And so it may be sooner than later for him. But as we turn our attention to Florida A&M athletics, it's been really a lot of success going on in the other sports, if you think about it. And it looks like this program, as far as Florida A&M athletics, is set up to do well. Yeah, definitely. Softball riding high right now. Yeah. Number one in the swag east. Um, baseball riding high right now. And, and baseball, since I've been here, baseball has been more of a postseason team. Yeah. But now it's like they're putting it all – they're trying to put it all together. I think right now they're still number one in the swag east. And I don't know when the last time that's happened with baseball <laughs> and softball both being number yeah. one. Yeah, But yeah. that has been that has been great. Cross country, uh, track and field. Uh, Coach Garfield, Ellenwood, he's came yeah. in and and really built the program up and have them out here, you know, collecting medals, collecting championship rings. Um, it's been a great one. Even uh, I know volleyball didn't win it this year, but the past two years, they were, yeah, they were the first FAMU team to win the Absolutely. swag championship. Absolutely. Um, so it's man, it's been a, it's a great. It's, this is a great age for FAMU athletics, just for. You know, of course, football is the big one. Everybody wants to see the football team win. But to say, hey, we're not just a one-trick pony. We That's can, right. We can beat you in baseball, no. <laughs> softball. Man, if we had a cricket team, we'll beat you. You know what I mean? So so uh, it's, a, it's a great age for family athletics. It's, 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 it's been pretty good. You know, you're starting to sound like a rattler. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, what was interesting this morning at uh, Coffee with Cozy is that we had an opportunity to hear from the vice president and uh, athletic director, Tiffany Don Sykes. A couple of points. She actually said she would like to add women's golf. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about the emergence of adding sports to this athletic program. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. I mean, everybody always looks for expansion. And um, if there's a women's golf team, I mean, it can be very competitive. I mean, you have guys that's on a men's golf team that's uh, Marcus Taylor. He's He's been pretty good. I've seen his name, um, name in the headlines a few times. Mm -hmm. um, so adding a women's golf team, that would be a pretty good investment, especially if they end up being uh, competitive. It'll be great, you know. Just you just want to just keep adding. You want to keep enticing student athletes to join and um, to to come to the school and you know adding that sport. That's just gonna that's just gonna you know just increase the numbers because it's like, man, I've been wanting to go to FAMU. You know, my dad went to FAMU. My mom went to FAMU. 
and I play golf. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to try to get a scholarship. Maybe they can connect me with the university or the coach and, um, you know, recommend me or something like that. So it's always good to see um, see there's always a plan for expansion and just to, you know, just bring more, bring more excitement and bring more opportunities for the athletic program. Definitely. And here's another line that I was unaware of that Tiffany brought up. It is important, you know, you have to have 14 sports mm -hmm. to qualify for Division One. Yep. So if you don't have that extra sport and there's a fall off in bowling or somewhere else, mm -hmm. then you're looking at Division Two. So right. it's important that they continue to build there. The last point, it's time for Florida A&M to pick a men's basketball coach. Yeah. Your thoughts? Yeah, it's definitely about that time. You know, it's been a few weeks now since uh, they announced that they were parting ways with uh with Coach McCullum. And uh, I mean, wish Coach McCullum well. Yeah. You know, he's always been good, good to guy. me since I've arrived here. Yes, good guy. Um, so it's gonna be interesting. I mean, just seeing how Coach Bridget Gordon yes. was able to really just revive the FAMU women's basketball program and take them to the first the program's first SWAC tournament and win and have the player of the year on their team is like, man, imagine if both if both squads had, like, respectable basketball because, you know, football is the tone setter for the school year. It is. the first sport, you know, the first football game is usually the second, third week of, of, uh, of school. So, but when football ends, you don't want to have that drop off. You know, you want to keep that. Right. You want to keep that um, – that 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 excitement going and even for a certain period of time football and basketball overlap a little they do. bit so you know you just want to just keep it going keep the momentum going you know like it'll be great to see family win the celebration bowl and then their basketball team out there killing it and um you know just to keep that momentum going uh um lawson is a great gym it is you know, it's a one of the very, best i still remember my first time walking in lawson i'm like man this this is nice yeah this <laughs> yeah. is nice you know what i'm saying <laughs> one of the best gyms in division one right um, so, you know, it, it'll be it'll, it'll be even nicer with, with some more wins. Definitely, in. definitely. And I have been one of the big people that uh, have been – I really want to see that facility full for a basketball game. It, it It's an amazing atmosphere. If you were there for Greek night, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, I was there for Greek night. Uh, of course, you know, my organization, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity <laughs> Incorporated, you know, I was there – you know, out there live and direct. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, it was it was that was a great atmosphere. Maybe the my favorite family basketball game I've ever been to. Um, the crazy thing is, like that game was so fun. I don't even remember who family was playing that night. It was you know it was so much going on. But uh, you know that's a that, that was a very that was a very fun environment to be in. And if you were able to get those type of environments every single game, man, it it'd just be great. You know, I know people say. You know, winning will help, um, but you know, just being out there to support the support the team, uh, win, lose, or draw, and that'll really drive those guys and drive that attendance. And you know, it'll also help with uh, recruiting students there. You know, they see, oh man, they be turned up at the right, basketball right, too. right, right. So, um, so yeah, man, it, that was great, great jump. I love to, love to see more more uh, butts and seats there. I'm gonna put a cap on the basketball, but right now. What they're doing down on the field, Gerald, are you familiar with what they're doing in this format yeah. for spring? Because what it is is no offensive line, no defensive line. It's basically wide receivers and a running back against defensive backs. Yeah, so basically it's a, it's called a skelly period, and skelly period is just a fancy way of saying seven oh seven. So uh, so that's what they're doing. You know, it, it's a way to kind of train the, the the defensive backs to learn different coverages. And things like that. So, so that's that's what it is. That's what the Skelly period is. So that's what they're running right now, uh, just to see what the DBs are, are uh, you know, just see what they made of, you know, when the pressure is on them. That pass was complete from Richardson to Kobe Gross, another tight end. Talk a little about Kobe Gross. Yeah, uh, Kobe. Uh, first of all, he's a smart kid. <laughs> um, uh, got. He, I don't know if he got the top GPA on the team. He may have it. I know he got like a three point nine or something like that. So smart kid. Transferred over from uh from Florida State, um um for the before the twenty twenty two season. So uh you know it's a very deep tight end room. It's a very deep tight end room. Jeremiah Pruitt. Uh, Kobe, um, they just got a commitment from a guy from Pittsburgh, uh, right? Right. Uh, Carter Johnson. So 
you know, there's a there's a lot of uh, tight ends, and I know they really going to want to incorporate that tight end position in the offensive attack. Well, to put a cap on the basketball situation, the update from the AD this morning is that they are down to a candidate. Uh, what's interesting is she said she had over 50 people apply for the job, everything from a, a junior, JV coach yeah. in high school to an NBA coach. So this is an important hire. Were you surprised they went the committee route? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, committees are good. Committees are definitely good. Um, and committees, you know, they're going to have they're going to have their best interest for the program. So it's always good to kind of have a have you know another voice. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so so it was good to have a committee together because you know they're they're putting their brains together trying to decide. Who is his best person? And the best thing is, you know, you know, who's going to really come? Who's who's hungry for the job? Right. You know what I'm saying? Who's really up to the challenge of really saying, hey, I'm going to rebuild this family men's basketball uh, program and, and just make it one of the top ones. So uh, so that's something that's going to be interesting and just to see who will be that person that's going to rise to the top and how they're going to put their own stamp on the family basketball program and just make it a make it a respected program, um, you know, in the coming season. One of the things you do get with the committee is Jalen Spear, the starting point guard, was on that committee. Yeah. And if he's looking at his next head coach, that's a valuable asset for the committee. Definitely, definitely, because you got to think, Jalen Spear is probably telling his teammates that are going to come back, hey, you know, this is probably going to be our coach. So, you know, it kind of gives guys, you know, uh, uh, it kind of gives guys a heads up on what to expect and how they want to go about their future. Like I said, transfer portal. If a guy isn't on the, if a guy, if a guy's on the fence about who the coach is going to be, you know, you know, he may say, you know, I think I'm gonna think I think I'm gonna just, you know, try to play elsewhere or something like that. And you know, and that's fine. But you know, but having that, having that out, that student athlete voice on the committee. I think that's very valuable just to show those guys that they're really being cared about and keeping them involved in the process. Again, Melvin Beal here on the Rattler Sports Network. Joining me is Gerald Thomas, the beat writer for the Tallahassee Democrat. Gerald, it has been really refreshing to hear from you today. You're doing some great work writing another touchdown in yep. there by Jacory Corey Jordan. Jordan. Yep. Finally, wrap us up. What do you think this Florida a &M team is going to do coming up in this next football season? Uh, I think it's going to be a it's going to be a, a change. It's definitely going to be a change. Like I said, a lot of teams are going to be are, are going to be gunning for them just because they're the defending HBCU national champions. But uh, like I said, I think this is a very this is a very um, uh, motivated team to get back there because, like I said. Ever since Coach Simmons left, everybody been counting them out. Transfer portal, people been counting them out. So, uh, so you know, I think this team still has a very – I think this team has a lot to play for. You know, winning the championship is hard, but repeating is even harder. So, you know, that's going to be what they're going to be chasing all season. But it just got to take it one game at a time. As these new players start to come in or players leave out, these guys have to make sure they stay committed. They got to stay devoted. They got to stay – with each other, you know what I mean, and and keep building that bond, and then they keep building that bond, and it's going to show on the field. But I think it's going to be a very, I think it's going to be another pretty good season. It's going to be another story field season. Absolutely, season. absolutely. Two games stick out for me. First of all, University of Miami, yeah. all right, and Troy State. Yeah. Those are the bigger schools. And in the past, you wouldn't think that Florida a and would have a chance. Your assessment on their chances against those two teams. Yeah, I mean – you see how they played against teams on the power five level the last couple of years. I mean, they were they they turned the ball over five times against USF and lost by two touchdowns. Right. It was a five to zero, you know, turnover differential, and they still could have won that game. Um, and then against North Carolina, a super short-handed team going taking that trip to Chapel Hill after everything they endured the last 24 hours with right. the players finally they couldn't play you know and um they still went out there and put up a fight even in that first half and then depth just came into play you know 2021 they went to USF you know played USF close once absolutely. again absolutely so i mean those guys they're going to be they're going to be um committed to trying to knock off these teams or at least challenge them and uh really get some good film on on um 
get some good film out there because, you know, you show out in one of those games or both of those games, you got a chance of going to the next level just because you're showing scouts, hey, I can play I can play against the top co- the teams in the top conferences in uh, college football. And with the transfer portal and NIL right now, in effect, that is a legitimate point. When we turn to the SWAT, key games are always that team in Jackson, Mississippi – Right. Yeah. We talk about Alabama State. Yeah. But there's a team emerging down in Daytona Beach. Yep, yep. I was just saying I think I think they're gonna I think Bethune is gonna have a, a, a better uh a better season than they've been having, um, you know, the last couple of years. Or, you know, they got Coach Raymond Woody. He's a he's an alum of the university and of course so he has a deeper type of connection with the program. So he's gonna take an extra it's gonna take an extra amount of pride for him to really rebuild that program. But I think I think in I think in years to come I think that Florida Classic rivalry is going to be back to, you know, back to how it was back and forth. Uh, never know who's going to win. You know, I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be a, another nine a nine year winning streak. <laughs> no, but uh, but you know, I think it's going to be a very back and forth rivalry as as both teams continue to build their programs up. Definitely. I'm Melvin Beal here with the Rattler Sports Network. We're interviewing Gerald Thomas, the beat writer from the Tallahassee Democrat. Gerald, it has been a ball having you here with me. As I said, Albert Chester is doing public address announcer duty today. You were able to bring in that insight for this Rattler program, and it's good to see that really there's a lot to hope for with this tape. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm very excited for the team. Of uh, I've seen the team from when spring practice started or when March first. I I was telling I was telling Coach Cozy and the players. I was like, man, I done lost count of how many practices. <laughs> been. But uh, but yeah, I think it's an exciting season ahead. You know, it's a it's a fresh fresh team, fresh coach. Um, you know, it's it's just gonna be exciting to see. Um you know, the stories that emerge out of this upcoming season. Definitely. And, again, Gerald, you're just, you know, you're doing the Tallahassee Democrat, but how can people follow you? Yeah, um, I'm a, I mostly post my work on Twitter, uh, at 3PG. That's the number three, uh, the letter P, the letter E, the letter A, the letter T, the letter G, <laughs> the letter E, the letter E, uh, 3PG, <laughs> Gerald Thomas III. So that's where the name 3P come from. You know, a lot of people ask me. <laughs> Um, Gerald Thomas the third, and my nickname is G, so three P G. Uh, so yeah, so Twitter, that's where you can find me. Um, all my work goes on there. Tallahassee Democrat website, Tallahassee.com or RattlerNews.com, and you can go straight to the FAMU page. Um, so, so yeah, but you know, I'm all over. You know, if anybody ever seen me out and about, uh, see me out at the game, you know, you can stop by and speed. We can take a picture, or whatever, whatever. Yes. Um. So, so yeah. So it's, it's it's been a pretty good ride. What has been your take on doing this broadcast thing? Today? Oh man, it's it's great. You know, it's, it's great. You know, I, I got to add this to the add this to my resume. Yes. You know, saying, you know yeah, yeah, part time broadcaster. Yeah, yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but it, 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 it's been a, it, it's been great jumping on here for the spring game. Definitely. Well, we'd like to thank you for joining us. There's one minute and seven seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter of the annual spring game here at Bragg Stadium at Ken Riley Field. I'm Melvin Beal. I'm being joined by Gerald Thomas. Any words going out that you'd like to leave? Uh, like I said, um, I appreciate everybody for, you know, supporting my work. Um, uh, keep reading, and, um, you know, I'm going to keep, you know, putting out putting out coverage, you know, covering the FAMU Athletics Program. And always a big thanks to the FAMU Athletics Program for kind of giving me that all access to yeah. truly get to cover their program. You know, I know that's something that's, that takes a lot of a lot of trust, you know, and um, so I'm very appreciative of every, uh, every opportunity that I've been uh, afforded here at the Tallahassee Democrat and FAMU and, and all of that. So, you know, it's very good being around the program, very good being out here on this Saturday, spring game Saturday. So, <laughs> so yeah, man, I appreciate you for having me on yes, the show. Yes, definitely. Know, it's always, always, uh, I'm always up to join the show. So, so thank you to you too. Definitely. Now, my wife is in the booth, Juana Beal, and she's getting used to Tallahassee. Your assessment of Tallahassee? Uh, Tallahassee been cool. You know, I moved here. I moved here from my hometown of Savannah, Georgia. So it was a, it was a little change because you know I, I I left family you know to move down here. But yeah. you know it was a move to 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 um, that next step in my career and further my education. So it's been a, it's been a um, been a, a good time here. I always say the best time in Tallahassee is 
football season. Yes. You know, it's all, it's football season. So uh, so so yeah, during football season that's when it's that's when it gets real turned up here in Tallahassee. You know, when football season over it's a little drop off, but um you no know, pretty good. You can find some good food spots. Um so so it's been it's been it's been good to me. Definitely. You wanna stir up the pot a little bit? Let's I'm go. gonna throw this at you. Let's go. Okay, you're not ready for it. You're not ready for it. <laughs> Let's go. But would you like to see a Florida A and M University men's basketball game against Florida State? I'd love to. Yeah. I'd love to. I'd love to see it. football, basket, whatever sport that you can match up uh, with Florida State, and I'd love to see it, um, just to see the, see both of the Tallahassee universities go at it. I mean, you could call it the, the Tallahassee <laughs> Classic, the Capital City Classic, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I think that'd be I think that'd be something good, um, you know, just for the city um, to have both of the universities go at it and, and just, you know, Fam, you may pull off an upset and get the bragging rights for the year. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I think that I think that'll be something that that can be looked into for years to come, to just to see the Rattlers and the Seminoles square off. You know, just in a you know just in a one off you know non conference type of game. Yeah, well, you know, there's some history behind it. Yep. As a matter of fact, they used to play in basketball, and one of those games was it just ended. Yeah, you heard about yeah, that, I heard right? About that, yeah. But here's what I think. I think from an economic standpoint, you can sell out. This stadium, Lawson, you could sell out this other stadium over here, yeah. Tucker. And I think that economically it makes sense. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I love to see I love to see that uh, see that be an element added to the athletics program. Um yeah, just to see the Rattlers and the Seminoles go at it. You don't see that often. I think the softball teams play against each other. Yeah, they do. Um, but um, you know, you don't see that much from the other sports. So it'll it'll be great to to see that. Maybe a FAMU, FSU yearly series where the teams play against each other once a year. You know what? I'm so glad you're on board. Nobody talks about that. They may. Is that a red dot on your head right now? Because a lot of people don't want to see this happen. <laughs> <laughs> the clock says uh, that this game has ended. They're still running plays down there. They have up on the scoreboard offense 14, obviously defense is zero, but the defense has had several interceptions here. And right now, Gerald, it looks like we have no major injuries coming out of this game, and that's one of the objectives. Come out healthy. Yep, like I said, health is well. <laughs> that's the simplest way I can put it. Health is well, so it's good to come out with no injuries, and uh, you know these guys get to go into the finish their spring semesters and and uh, you know just get ready for that summertime summertime workouts and get ready for fall training camp. Definitely, we're gonna let you get out of here because we know you got to get down there and interview the head coach and about this football game and, and its impact on the program. Gerald, thank you so much for joining us here on yes, the sir. Rattler Sports Network. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me always. Definitely. Yes, sir. Thank You're in you. tune to the Rattler Sports Network. We'll be back in a moment. HBCU students, are you making a difference? AT&T wants to support you in taking your dreams to new heights with a chance to win five grand and so much more. Apply now to the AT&T Rising Future Makers Showcase by uploading a video or a written submission to att.com slash RFM Showcase. Don't miss your chance to become a part of the Rising Future Makers Network for support and life-changing connections. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents, age of majority. Ends 11 6 -23. Void if prohibited. Subject to official rules. No, oh, mommy, yo estoy bien. I'm okay on money. Si, ¿Sí? y papa? Yeah, I'm starting work tomorrow, actually. Hi, can you tell me if I'm doing this right? Yeah, that looks right. Oh, really? I think you're good. When you leave one comfort zone in search of another, Regions has the people, tools, and tech. I can help you with that. New job? New everything. To help you move forward faster and brave the beginning. <laughs> Triangle Sales is a proud supporter of FAMU Athletics. Triangle Sales has been the leading beverage wholesaler in the North and North Central Florida area since 1996. Our 210 knowledgeable beverage professionals service over 2,000 retail customers in our 14 county territory from our two facilities in Tallahassee and Ocala. Triangle Sales, a proud supporter of FAMU Athletics. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium at Ken Raleigh Field as we are here for the annual spring game as the offense and the defense continue to go at it after it is zero 
seconds left on the game clock, so they're getting in some extra reps right now as the offense is moving the ball. Earlier today, I got a chance to talk with Coach Cozy at the Cozy for with Coffee event, and we were playing that interview when the halftime ended on us. I'm going to put that interview back up for you so you can hear more from Coach Cozy.
Back live here at Bragg Memorial Stadium. The annual spring game is officially open are here at Bragg Stadium. Some players are lingering out on the field, but this is an extended practice for the program. The scoreboard says 14 to nothing. It was the offense against the defense. We'd like to thank you for joining us here on Rattlers Plus and the Rattler Sports Network. I'm Melvin Beal. Take care, everyone, and God bless.